Pues. Now you're 120% dictator. Yeah, everybody at that age, they're sperminator. Yeah. So if we don't care about anything else, we're a walking hard on looking for a hole. That's. <laughs> uh, I have to say you're right on that one. Oh my God. A stiff breeze comes through the room and you return the favor. Gonorrhea! No. <laughs> Somewhere on the outside of this building, there is a hole where squirrels come in. Trying Better to than a hole where dicks come in. Yeah, better than that. <laughs> Going down the stairs to wash the laundry. What the hell? Shh, pizza, pizza. Stop, stop it now. I order you to stop. I'm still touching myself. Yeah! All young bitches want to do is pop pills, smoke weed, get drunk, lay around, suck dick, eat hot Cheetos, charge their phone, get a sew and weave, twerk, be bisexual, eat McDonald's, wash their pussy in the sink, lie, take <laughs> selfies, and talk shit through Wi-Fi because they phone never on. I think washing they pussy in the sink is my favorite part. (laughs) (laughs) The Vietnamese trade in dongs. Figuratively and literally, I'm sure. (laughs) Oh my god, that's hilarious. Um, I, I did decide to look it up. 500,000 dogs is a good night for Pops X. <laughs> like most women, oh. he's an emotional thinker. Good. God. I mean, that's part of the problem we're having now in, in our society is we have a bunch of emotional thinkers that want the world to, you know, to fall in line with their emotions. <laughs> it's not. Uh, look, reality doesn't give a shit no. about emotions. It's my lived truth. Fuck your lived truth. No, it's not. It's your perspective. Kiss my ass. Literally, like, hey, Sarn Pop, you got to turn your bear suit. I'm like, over my dead body. No. Just give me a statement of charges. Yeah. You're never getting yeah. this back. Yeah. You can suck it. I'm going to wear this with my Russian faggot coat. <laughs> you, you will bury me in this. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Why got to fucking be like that, man? Because I'm an asshole, and I learned from the best. I'm sitting across from him, and I'm pointing at you with all four fingers. <laughs> all right, first of all, the Russian jacket. Is World War II surplus? I'll send you a picture of it, Sarge. Yeah, okay. Well, I got you that standing new- wearing it with holding two giant buckets, like you just collected all the chum from behind the dump dumpster at the bar bar, and you're gonna go home and make ice cream <laughs> out of it. Sons of B. Arch is Terrence Pop here with an actual live from the lair show tonight. Okay, so this is what we got going on. Uh, we're going to cover some of the January 6th fiascos. And we are going to do the usual historic comp. Uh, we're going to compare it to actually what happened in the late 1800s and early 1900s in Russia. Because a lot of that stuff that happened back then is happening now, except it's happening much faster because we are now digital. We are not analog back in the day when you had to write shit down and maybe use a uh, Morse code, uh, you know, thingamajigger. 
but we have the internet and all of that craziness going on. Now, I've covered this before in past shows. All of our media is owned by six corporations, and they are literally <laughs> piping in the elevator music into the country and the Western world to screw us over. Now, the whole January 6th craziness. <clears throat> now, I was in Washington, D.C. during that time frame. I was there working private security uh, for a couple of uh, venues that were taking place in and around D.C. We both were. Yeah. On the day that this whole thing went down, I literally watched Trump speak on the big screen because I couldn't get that close. And I certainly didn't want to go, you know, where it was actually happening. This is too much visibility. And after he got done speaking, I got that S feeling like I need to get the hell out of here uh, because I know people are going to walk down there and, you know, all it takes is one bonehead and things get dynamic real quick. And I went back to my hotel room in Virginia. I got on the subway and I was out of there. <clears throat> now, uh, early 2020, I actually was contacted by the FBI. And apparently they had reported that I was trying to raise an army to overthrow the government. Which we had a good laugh over because what I was really doing was setting up Pops Preppers. I just fucked up the name. And it is what it is. So I know I'm on the list. In fact, anyone out there who has any of the combat credentials or used to have a TS SCI clearance is on a list. Plain and simple. Now, <clears throat> there is some movement going on with the people in the January 6th uh, craziness. It is confirmed that some of those people have been in solitary confinement for over two years, which in my opinion, is unacceptable. In actual big boy prison, if you stab a dude, you get anywhere between one and three months in the hole. Let's let that sink in. These other individuals who are, you know, under the care of the alphabet agencies, they walked around and, yeah, was there a couple of tussles here and there? Yes. But in the end of the day, one of the protesters there was executed. The media lied about individuals that uh, died because of the crowd, and uh, that's in, in, you know blown out of the water. Because not only is what's happening in regards to the comparison of communism, you know, it's taken place here in America and back in the 1900s, is the internet is working for them and against them at the same time. And we're going to go through a lot of these uh, stories and see if we could shake out a little truth. Now, <clears throat> Murphy showed up, and um, one of the individuals that we had to assist, Jimmy Bones, he's having microphone problems. I don't think he is now. Well, I'm, we, still, I'm still trying to figure those out. Can you guys hear me now? Hey. Oh, you made it! Finally, right, Murphy, now, you can smurf my balls. We're probably going to have Red Pill show up because I called him and he's dropping everything to help with the show too. So uh, we unfucked Murphy, which rarely, rarely happened. We had to call the 17th level wizard. Blake. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, back. He's actually calling me right now. I'll be right back. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so uh, it, yeah. let him know if Red Pill wants to the come situation on. situation has been unfucked. All right. So anyway... Dude, I don't know. I just fucking plug my shit in. Got it ready uh, hey, hey, Jimmy, we can hear you. You're a hot. Oh. Hey, I got him. <laughs> Stand by. Just mute him real quick. I got him. Right. I got him. I got him. Sorry about that. <laughs> Murphy showed up again. <laughs> Murphy wanted one last swing. Yeah. Well, first of all, it seems like Murphy always shows up when you have multiple systems hooked in and stuff. That's just the way it goes. Anywhere where Murphy could put his penis, he will. In a non-gay way, of course. Just saying. So uh, we have uh, Battle of Dwarf on station, Mr. History. Let's pull up the first uh, the first link. You know, before you go there, uh, you okay. talked about being on that security, security detail. I was overall comms for the three principles that we had. 
Yes. I was handling, oh, that's right. You you, you got yeah, me I in was there. handling comms for that. Yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> I had the same ESP moment that you had because as soon as it started to get weird, I said, pull them. And I still have the report that we wrote on that. And it happened. I gave the order to pull the principles. That's the guys that you're protecting. Uh-huh. Uh, I gave the order to pull the pr- principles. And two minutes later, everything kicked off. The stringers were giving me weird reports. They're like, we have strange movement over on the north side of the, uh, the mm-hmm. SCOTUS building. We've got some weird movement over here in front. I'm like, mm, get them out. <laughs> yeah. You're so, talking like General Flynn and those other, yeah. And, yeah, and a couple of others. Yep. Yep. And that was the, yeah. what the, I wasn't going to name the principles. No, I, well, everyone knows. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, Flynn he was and one. And then there was the, the, what, the My Pillow guy. Chafian. And I don't remember. There was Chafian and there was the My Pillow guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then actually there was one other. There was, there was a group of two principles. And then there was Chafian <laughs> and Herp Entourage and then Flynn. Those, those were our, our principles for that. But yeah. as soon as it started, as soon as the stringers on the outside, mm-hmm. we had two layers of stringers on that day. Uh, when they started to report back, because there were Antifa gatherings uh, it, five, six blocks from yes. on the on the northeast, on the northwest side of the uh, box. I, I remember the night before when I was working mm-hmm. uh, at that one uh, event, I was on the outer court on security and um, I picked up on a couple of groups of the Antifa. I know we got that. We got that information in. We were actually giving that information to the DC police. What they did with it, I don't Nothing. know. But when that happened, we had the uh, on the northwest sector of the box, we had a bunch of activity, and then all of a sudden, on the east sector and the southeast sector, we started to get a bunch of activity, and they reported it back to me. Yeah. I said, "We're we're out of here. Get yeah. the general. Get the general the fuck yeah. out." right well, now the night before i actually talked to some of these antifa guys because they, they were traveling in three or four man pack groups mm-hmm. yeah, and I, I literally walked up i'm like look here i know you guys are antifa you know we're not we're not having you attack anyone who's leaving this rally and they're like i don't know what you're talking about yeah we had and, a couple of incidents and literally i'm like okay all i have to do is key this radio give a code word and 30 dudes will be here inside of 30 seconds yeah we can have it go down that way or you can just leave my favorite one was some they of left. the stringers. Some of the stringers on the south side by the National Mall <clears throat> had the uh, old school earpieces. Yep. And on Twitter, we were watching a bunch of Twitter feeds, and they're like, "There's Secret Service all over the place here." We'd see like two or three of our dudes, and we're like, <laughs> "We didn't yeah. thought, they thought that shit was." Pretty so cool. you know, we were there. Yeah. Okay. I, I I was not at the actual event that took place that caused all of no, this. No, we got our people out before yeah. it started, which yeah. is why we didn't get any trouble. Yeah. We were we were we were there to provide security detail for a couple of people, and as soon as shit got weird, we left. Got them out. Yeah, because I, I remember um, the group I was with didn't have a detail on the day that Trump sp- spoke, so we went there just to watch him speak on the big screen. Mm-hmm. And I remember I had like five or six of those guys with me. I'm like, we need to get the hell out of here. We were Western sector. Yeah, yeah this we is going to get this is going to get ugly. Yep. And sure as shit, we had. Uh, well, Bank of America willingly give up all kinds of financial records on on countless people. Yeah. Why there isn't, you know, 100,000 lawsuits against Bank of America. You know, all I, no I care about is once again, hey, you know what? Once again, we got all of our guys out alive. Yes. We didn't lose anybody. Well, yeah. But I'm just saying. Out, that, on the detail. Yeah. Anyway, so no shit. There we were, hip deep in soju caps when... Uh, is that red pill down there? There we go. That is red pill down there. Hey, man, let me add you in. Welcome to the show. Okay. He's on muted mic. Why that's fine. Muted mic? Can't unmute your guests because they choose to mute themselves. Okay. All right. That's fine. So the real reason that January 6th QAnon shaman was released from prison early, I wanted to grab this one because this guy became like the centerpiece for the whole thing. All anybody talked about was this nutcase. Real name, Jacob Chansley. Turns out he's just a wandering weirdo who likes to get into trouble, and that's that. There's tons of photos of him all over the internet and everything. But There's, uh, there's a couple words for that. Uh, isn't it what, useful idiot? Is it, yeah, yeah. A bit there. A bit there. Uh, Jacob Chansley, the convicted J6 rioter, was dubbed the QAnon shaman. He didn't have anything to do with QAnon, by the way. 
thanks to viral photographs of his outlandish getup. His former attorney and legal experts say it has nothing to do with Tucker Carlson or the Fox News hosts broadcast seemingly being led through the hallways of the Capitol by police. Now, I want to point out something. If you're storming a building and your intent is to cause harm of some kind or anything like that, you don't have news crews there waiting for photo ops. Yes. Set up perfectly. You don't pose with all of your pals. Uh, you don't have the news crews diligently following you through the entire place. You don't have police escorting you through rope cordons. This guy had whole, a whole CNN news crew dedicated to just him and his buddies. Do you remember that? I do. I do. A side note. What the hell is Q- QAnon? I've been hearing QAnon this. is that whole conspiracy theory where if we just wait two more weeks, there's a secret organization ah, yeah, yeah. Okay. of all of the real government officials. There's a real government out there, uh, and Fair Trump enough. is going to bring back the real government, and we're going to overthrow this one, and blah, blah, blah. It's okay. They obviously, here we are three years later. Yeah, because I, I, over the past few years, I've had a lot of people like you know accuse me. You're just a member of QAnon. I'm like, what the fuck is QAnon? Yeah. I'm just an old grunt who's medically fucking broken from getting wounded in two right. fucking wars. Yeah. Just talking trash, trying to educate the masses out there who aren't paying attention. That's the only thing I'm doing. That's exactly correct. That's that's exactly what's going on. So prison records indicate that Chansley, a self-described shaman, entered a residential reentry management facility in Texas on Tuesday with a release date of May 25th, about 14 minutes ahead of his schedule. They have not commented on the reason for his release, but noted that recent changes to the First Step Act allow inmates to earn up to 54 days of good cut. Now, why is this significant? They're making a big deal out of Mr. Chansley here. Uh, pleaded guilty in September 2021 to one felony count of obstruction of an official proceeding, which was BS, and sentenced to 41 months in prison. So he got Basically, three years and change for trespassing. Correct. Uh, he was carrying a spear and wearing a horned fur hat and face paint. It's a not a spear. It's a flag, well, first it, of all. Does it have a pointy end? On it, it has a pointy end, but uh, those are decorative ceremonial flags. Yeah, I know. I just, right, uh, so, you guys got by. me still? Yeah, yeah, we got you. What's up? Okay, okay, okay. We're good. We're, we're good now. Right. Murphy has been finally unfucked, so okay. I think we're good. Okay, phrasing. All right. Um. Anyway, what I'm getting right. at here is they, this guy was given three and a half years, but now he's getting out on good behavior, and they're putting him in a halfway house, and he was just a clown walking through a hallway. This photo you can see here demonstrates exactly what I'm talking about. Look at these guys. They're stopping to pose for photos. They're walking around. They're having a good time. They've got a, a media crew with them. Now, the crazy thing is he's getting all of the attention. What's not getting the intention is all of the other people who are getting 22 years. I don't think Enrique, Tor- Enrique Tario was actually at DC. Do you recall if he was I, I don't DC? recall seeing him. They're calling him a white supremacist. He's Puerto Rican and he's married to a black woman, I believe. Now, wasn't is he, he gay isn't woman? he the guy that was in charge of the Proud Boys? That's the one. Yeah. But they're calling him a white supremacist. The guy is obviously, obviously not white. Ob- obviously. And I believe, I believe he is either gay or married to a black woman. I don't So care. the whole that white supremacy thing goes out the window. It doesn't matter to me either, but what matters is they're the ones who are being racist and saying these things. Yes, and we're all worried correct. about being called racist. And here they are calling this guy a white supremacist. And he's obviously Hispanic. Well, here's the thing. Yeah. We're all evil, hairless monkeys. Correct. Now, I uh, I am on the portion that is severely melanin challenged. Mm. That person is somewhere in between. Yes. And how many, they give him, what, 20 years? 22 years. Oh, my God. 22 years for being there. So here's the thing that's killing me, and this is where the useful idiots part comes in. And Papa and I are going to talk about this in a minute right after we get through this because it's relevant. 
Um, the thing we were talking about at the beginning of the show, yep. before the show started. Some 378 individuals have been sentenced to periods of incarceration over the involvement of January 6, 2021 uprising at the U.S. Capitol in the 32 months since the attempted overthrow election took place. The District of Columbia Attorney's Office said on Wednesday, note the language they use. People walked around. There was no attempted overthrow. There was no attempted coup d'etat. I've seen coup d'etats. Oh, yeah. This ain't it. Okay. Pop and I both have. Well, seen what about when uh, that the, sort of the abortion weirdos stormed the Supreme Court? Or the Capitol building. Or the Capitol in, building. In different states. Yeah. yeah. Nothing was done to nothing, them. Nothing has Literally, been done. Literally, nothing was done to them. More than 1,146 people hailing from all 50 states in the Capitol have been charged with a variety of alleged offenses in relation to their presence at the grounds of Congress that day. That ground is our ground. I don't care what they say. Through the FBI, though the FBI noted recently that there were seven named individuals who had absconded from the law while facing charges. Now, this pisses me off more than anything because I dealt with North Korea for a number of years and I know what a totalitarian dictatorship looks like. Yep. Okay. I have sat from me to pop or closer with North Koreans that were coming from death camps. Actual, real death camps where they deliberately starve people to death. Mm. And I heard horror story after horror story that I relive at night sometimes when I'm sleeping, which is a great deal of fun, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. Okay? So <clears throat> these news media people who are on here gushing over attempted overthrow, coup d'etat, all these words that they're using, these media monkeys are setting themselves up for a failure that they don't understand because they're being used by the people behind this power grab as the mouthpiece to condemn all of these people who were there on January 6th, turn them into monsters in the public eye. They get no trials, which we're going to get to in a minute. The media acts as a political arm for these parties. Correct. And just condemns the hell out of these people so that all the normal normies, as we refer to them lately, I guess, uh, normal Americans see this. Go, oh, it's terrible. They attempted a coup. They're, you know, they tried to overthrow the legitimate government of the United States. Well, I don't think anyone even had a weapon. No, none of our guys did. I know. I, wait, no, I think two of our guys were actually licensed to carry. Yeah in the dc area because they were actual <laughs> dc security detail people yeah i think it was two guys on our whole crew but if you're gonna large crew a coup d'etat usually involves weapons of some type am i wrong usually typically okay. and some killing yeah and you know i saw video footage of literally them moving barricades out of the way and allowing people to walk in freely I also saw groups of people walking through the Capitol Rotunda inside the red ropes in the statuary room, looking at the statues, just walking through, walking through the red yeah. ropes. That's insane. So the reason I'm so hot about this, though, is the media has played right into the hands of these people, and they think that they can't be next. Well, the fact of the matter is... If you go by history... They're on the chopping they're, block shortly. They're next. You want to run through that timeline? Yes, let's do that, do that right timeline now? right now. Let's do that. So <laughs> what we're looking at is a Bolshevik revolution. All of this started in 1848 with an ass bag named Karl Marx. I hope somebody who likes Karl Marx is out there listening because he was a diseased, unwashed, postulant, fat son of a bitch who used all of his wife's inheritance money, got the maid pregnant, hid that child, would only allow that child to come in the side door of the house, never worked a day in his life, was mostly a drunk, and only wrote about a quarter of all the stuff that's attributed to him. That's Karl Marx. So go Karl. ahead, look it up, have a good time. Yeah, Karl Marx brings up all of his stuff, gets it going. People go, this sounds like a really good idea because people are stupid and they want free things and they're entitled. Especially no. rich college kids. Oh, yeah. Entitled? That's the pattern. No. That's the pattern is the rich college kids. So there's a guy from Ukraine, and his name is Lev Bronstein, and he goes to Russia in 1916. And he starts to try to foment a revolution. At the time, the Tsar was still in charge, Tsar Nicholas. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, Czar Nicholas was having none of that and kicked him out of the country while Lev Bronstein goes to New York where he finds a bunch of bankers who are like, you know, actually, we could profit from this. So they bankroll Lev Bronstein, who goes to Russia now with an exorbitant amount of money for the time. I think in that at that time, it was something like $2 million. Hang right there. Hanging. What similarities are there? They send one guy with a whole boatload of cash to take down the Russian government at that time. Now we have BlackRock and Vanguard are literally doing the exact same thing. They're the New York bankers. There you go. It's happening again. What we need How many times for? we say this on the show? We're literally reliving our past. It's like an endless fucking loop. We never learn from it. This is insane. Yes. All right, I'm sorry. Well, That's okay. That's okay. We needed to get there. All right. We all needed right. to get there. So Lev Bronstein gets to Russia and decides that he needs a name change, and now you know him as Leon Trotsky. The psycho. The psycho. Oh, yeah. You thought yeah. you thought what, Len, what Stalin was bad. Stalin, dis, uh, didn't he whack that guy because he was too hang, fucking Hang sick? on. You're going to you're jumping oh, I'm ahead. Sorry, I'm you're jumping sorry. ahead. You're jumping ahead. Get back in line. All right. All right. <laughs> And uh, so Trotsky finds this guy, Lenin. They start this revolution. They get everything rolling. Lenin appear, uh, turns out to be very effective. He takes charge, and a guy named Beria forms the NKDV in this new Soviet Russia, and Beria is a vicious psychopath. Trotsky is not much better. They proceed to exterminate as many people as they could get their hands on, especially in the countryside, starve tens of millions to death. Uh, an yeah. act called the Holodomor that there are groups out there who don't like to acknowledge that it exists, but it exists. Yeah, and sorry, they don't actually have a number of no. how many people were starved. It's estimated to be 60 to 80 million yeah. for the Just Holodomor. Think, and that is even before World War II even started. This is it? before. Yeah. This is between 1917 and 1930, I think. Yeah. All of the starvation goes on. The NKDV, meanwhile, led by Beria, is a ruthless organization that just grabs people off of the street. And there's the Russian offer, Solstenin, I think it was, who said if we had been waiting in hallways for them to come to the door with clubs and sticks instead of cowering in our beds, it might have gone differently. Correct. Um that this is the NKDV and Beria that he's talking about. Well, hang on, hang on. Yeah. That is why you need to shut the mentality off of it's not me. You have to add the words it's not me yet. Because they will get to you at some point. It's I'm next. Yeah. You need to be thinking I'm next. Correct. My family is next. So this Beria guy goes around basically killing and torturing whoever he wants until they get what they consider to be a pure Soviet Politburo. You should look up the names of that pure Soviet Politburo, and it becomes very rapidly apparent what it is that they're going for there. Um, this Soviet Politburo is now consolidated. So the next step for Beria and his NKVD is to round up the idiots. Useful idiots. And that, that did the people take that the helped them. Yeah. So, and why did they do that? Because they didn't want it done to them. Yep. And Mao did the same thing. Correct. Mao would do the same thing in the 50s. So they round up the useful idiots and they kill all of them. Now they've got their Soviet Union. Isn't it glorious? We still have a problem. And this is where we are right now because all during that time, that Soviet Politburo controlled the journalists. Correct. And the journalists sang in tune. They preached everything the Soviet Politburo was giving them. We're here for you. Yes. And now the Soviet Politburo is all settled in. And that's where we are right now. That's where we are. Yeah. Because our uh, all of our media is owned by six fucking corporations. And we've got secret police snatching Americans and stuffing them into gulags for two, three years in solitary confinement. Well, there's that. And did it, somebody just get executed in a parking lot? Oh, they yeah. Called a it guy suicide? talking about things that were going wrong. Yeah. The Boeing guy. Mm. Yeah. I'm sure he, no, he committed suicide. Yes, that's what happened. He committed suicide. Uh, Let's it's stick blatantly with the official obvious. official version. Yeah, it's blatantly obvious. Let's stick with the official version. So this is where we are right now. You are right now with a Bolshevik government 
that thinks it has power. It's got the journalists singing their tune, saying anything the Bolshevik government wants them to say. <clears throat> and then that Bolshevik government turned around and killed all of the journalists oh, this and is gonna, replaced them. It's going to blow your mind. When Russia starved all those people to death, they were screwing with the food, right? I, isn't that going on right now? Yeah, I think we've got going, how many food processing, plants food processing plants have been burned up and like that. Yeah, we have odd private, private individuals and other fucking countries buying our farmland here. Why the hell are we allowing China to buy farmland here when we can't even own property over there? This is a setup from the top down, man. It's almost like a Bolshevik government. Oh yeah, kind of funded by foreign interests. Correct and. They've literally let our defenses down and imported an entire goddamn army into our country. And we covered that with what was a four shows mm -hmm. in uh, immigration invasion. Correct. Yep. Just just wait for the uh, the the people in Haiti to uh, come across. If you don't know what's going on in Haiti, you're already, oh, oh, we'll, we'll talk. We'll get there. Okay. Right, hold we'll on, Jimmy. Get we'll get there. there. We'll get there. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but you're you are you are uh, you are over the target, Jimmy. But don't hit the release button just yet. Roger that. Um, so these journalists that are reporting and gushing about the riots and the and the attempted coup in D.C. and you guys are next. That's right. You're next. And right after that is the useful idiots. No, the useful idiots came first. They're in jail right now. Well, here's the thing. It yes. That's how it went back in the day. Mm -hmm. But I can see them shutting down the journalists or making them you know, sing the song of the government and then going after the useful idiots. The, and I oh, think there was there was others always more useful idiots to go. Oh yeah. The useful idiots that I'm talking about are the ones who charged the capital. Okay, well, that's okay. just a small minority, but yeah, okay. It is a small minority, but that's all it took in Russia as well. All they had to do was take Moscow. <clears throat> Yeah, that's really all they had to do. Then the journalists go. Once the journalists go, and the the barrier, I think Merrick Garland is our barrier. Yeah, we'll, 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 listen, we'll go down that entire list. We will go down that, and we'll list. do comparisons. We'll, we'll go down that list. So now that we are at the journalists singing in tune with our new Bolshevik friends, we need to be very worried. This is the part where you really need to start worrying. But here's another thing that I think is working in our favor. If even if they're successful and they completely take over DC, yeah. there's over half the country who are not playing ball. In fact, we've got what Texas ready to leave the union. And yep. once that happens, you're going to see this country basically get divided in half in a very very short time frame. It's not going to be along the lines they think either. No. Now, here's the thing with that. Um, I think, this is my personal opinion, having dealt with an actual totalitarian government in the form of North Korea and having some brief touches with China and Russia during that time, because that whole area, they're all involved. I had touches with Japan as well, but they don't count in this particular equation. They're, re they're reasonably rational, despite having created 50% of all the weird shit in the world. Okay. Um, my thought train just went right the fuck off a cliff. That's fine. It happens. We're old. That happens. The uh, the the Merrick Garland Beria line that I'm drawing is with this U.S. Capitol violence thing here. This is the FBI's most wanted page that you're looking at. Here's U.S. Capitol violence. FBI is seeking assistance in identifying individuals who made unlawful entry. Okay, they started with U.S. Capitol violence. Mm -hmm. But what they're looking for is people who made unlawful entry into the U.S. Capitol building and committed various other alleged criminal violations, such as destructive of property, assaulting law enforcement personnel, blah, blah, blah. None of this stuff. Well, first of all, what, what law enforcement people were assaulted? I, I've heard. There were a couple of shoving matches in front of the Capitol, but it looks very much like those were staged. Well, and also, like, does that really raise to the level of a felony? No, not really. Again, that's that's kind of crazy, because mm -hmm. normally, I know a lot of cops 
who've gone into a lot of bars and there was all kinds of pushing shit going on. Yes. As long as nobody was actually punched, they usually just say, you go that way, you go that way. Everyone shut the fuck up. Yeah. I'm not you're, doing this you're paperwork. Typically looking, yeah, you're typically looking at public disturbance if they're going to yes. charge you with anything. Correct. You know, if you try to push the officer away from that, they'll get you with obstruction. Yeah. But that's it. But that, that's you're not looking at 22 year felonies and two years in solitary. And there are people out there who actually willingly shoot people, get second degree convictions and get less time in prison. Yes, that is correct. Holy, especially if you are of a certain racial persuasion, you're going to get one hell of a pass. Yes. By the legal system in current year lately as well. Now, here's the NKDV portion. You've got the FBI out there. This is their big thing right now. They're after anybody who was associated with this. Um, let's see if I can find view wanted posters. Oh, here we go. Okay. Who the hell is this guy? It's a guy in a hard hat. Yeah. He looks like he's really out there doing some serious violence, man. I'm telling you. Remarks. Caution. Adam is wanted by the FBI for his alleged involvement in the violence at the Capitol, allegedly at the tunnel on the West Front entrance, attempting to make access. He never got in. He was outside. He was standing by the tunnel, and they're trying to arrest this guy for what? He allegedly threw an object and assaulted them with a stolen riot shield. Okay. All right. But they even named the charge the charge here civil disorder. Theft of what government property? He never went into the building. He didn't steal the shield. The cop tried to shove him with it, probably, and he pulled it off of him and threw it back. That's well, what, what you're reading right there is called a stretch. Yes. And let's be honest. This isn't just happening at the federal government here. It's happening across the board. We have a problem with qualified immunity, which has never been ratified into an actual law. It was made Correct. by a judge. Explain qualified immunity for our judge. Qualified immunity is basically if you're in a position of authority, cop, judge, prosecutor, lawmaker, you can do whatever the hell you want outside the Constitution, and you're completely liability-free because of this qualified immunity. A lot of this shit would go away, especially if you're a guy and you get a long list of charges from the prosecutor and you get a not guilty across the board, you should be able to sue the shit out of that guy for stacking charges and trying to take away your constitutional rights. That's number one. Number two, it shouldn't cost you a fucking house to get access to your constitutional rights. Plain and simple. I lost $130,000 in cash and assets just in my custody battle. Yep. And, and listen, they if you think this government overreach is something new, it started in family court in the early or middle 70s. And it's been a slow mission creep to the point where they've just willy nilly violate all your constitutional rights. There's fuck all you can do about it. And are we surprised that that same attitude and modus operandi has spilled over into the regular courts? I'm not. Don't look at me. I'm just saying. Don't look at me. I don't know. Uh, that, that's just the way it is. But l- look at these pictures here. Are these all the guys you know that what? are? We went, we went, blew right past the end of the whole communist thing. Sorry. That's okay. That's okay. We got involved. Uh, I was talking about uh, Beria, the guy who ran the NKDV, and Trotsky, and Lenin. Now, Lenin dies of a stroke in 50, I think it was. They poisoned his ass. Oh, come on. No. I'm just saying. And then Joe Stalin takes over. Joe Stalin decides that Trotsky is a psychopath. I don't remember what happened to Beria, but I believe Beria just kind of disappeared. <laughs> so he was edited out of existence, like all the pictures. That's the guy in yeah. the picture. Yeah. Who? Oh, no. The guy who's no longer in the picture. Yeah, he's no longer in the picture. <laughs> really no longer in the picture. Yeah, they photoshopped his ass out before there was fucking Photoshop. So Trotsky flees the country, goes to Mexico, and is living happily there, and a bunch of American communists go down there and hang out with him, and isn't he a great guy? That Trotsky guy, that Lev Bronstein, why has he got to have an extra name? Why is he from the Ukraine? What's the tie there to what's going on today? The Trotsky gets down there to Mexico and eventually ends up assassinated by a Soviet agent. No. Yeah, I know. Like a loose end or something. Wow. Like a loose end or something. Very strange. Very strange behavior. (laughs) 
Yeah, yep. they have this habit of killing each other. I'm shocked. I am shocked that more U.S. politicians haven't had U.S. politicians assassinated. I mean, other than Kennedy being assassinated by our own CIA. Oh, no, no, no. He got a surprise haircut. Surprise haircut? He got a JFK surprise haircut. I like that. <laughs> I, lo- I like That's that a lot. A- Dick. Other than Jeff K getting a surprise moving haircut. <laughs> we're, we're so getting a walk through for that one. Um, All right. <laughs> I'm I'm shocked that more more American politicians haven't whacked each other. We know Hillary Clinton's got a All right, now, first of all, list of okay, allegedly. Allegedly, we can't allegedly, say it was she did. We, we're just saying it's very it is highly suspected yeah. that allegedly one Clinton, comma, Hillary has an extensive list that totals more than 54. I thought it was in the early, low 60s. Might well, be. I could be could wrong. Be. Okay, so there's that, though. Yep. Uh, anyway, over here, looking at these pictures, these are the people that the NKDV, I mean, the FBI has been picking up. Um, look at the body language on these. This guy's having a good time. Photograph 539. Dude's just having a good time. Yeah. For, it, it's it's ridiculous that we got this one here with the helmet with the GoPro on it. Here she is down here. It's somebody's smiling housewife. Yeah. With a mask on her chin. Look at having a good time. And then we've got Princess Pretty Girl here. She looks like a serious threat. Yep. What do you suppose she's got a claymore under that beret there? What? Uh, uh, anthrax. Maybe an RPG in her. No, anthrax. Anthrax. Let's go with the white powdery stuff. Okay, and maybe a couple of grenades or a little Chanel clutch. Maybe, 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 maybe. Yeah. Of course, that never happened. We're we're just being facetious. Hey, absolutely. And then this guy here oh, with the pink backpack. Pink the backpack, man. Big threat. Correct. Big threat. Obviously, may have four to five top secret battle monkeys in there. Uh, hang on. The the guy next door with only his eyes showing. That is that is pink backpack man. Oh, okay. They don't have his face. They just, okay. That's correct. But I can tell you right now that as a white male, approximately 5'8 to 5'10, maybe around 160, 170 pounds, he uh-huh. has a mustache, uh, is Caucasian, possibly with dark brown hair. I would say he's he's no older than 30. Uh, okay. I would go anywhere between 30 to 38 years of age, somewhere okay. in that window there. But yeah. I'm basing his size, by the way, on that backpack right there because my daughter had the same brand of backpack. Mm-hmm. That's a way you can identify people, by the way, and uh-huh. get details like that. Yeah, yeah, it's the same thing in sniper school. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know where I learned that from? A couple of snipers were. Yeah. yeah. So here's how you do this: you get the thing, you see the object there. We know it's this many <laughs> inches. Yeah, yeah. Lily, you just exactly. the yeah. We sat down with those guys that were freaking. And they could do that shit in their head. I used to be able to do that in my head before my head injury. We were all like, this is like fascinating. We're writing shit down. (laughs) That's that's where we learned it from with you guys. Correct. Uh, Okay. This one here. Photograph 534 in the center with the hat and the big smile on her face. She looks like the world's most dangerous housewife. Well, uh, first of all, the next one over. She's a redhead. She She should get crucified. Just saying. Now, now. Gingers have no, no, no. soul. No, no. <laughs> Gingers have no I'm just fucking right. This, this is my favorite one right here. Oh, yeah. yeah. What threat is this guy except to himself? 432, Mr. Mubilage. Mr. Mubilage. <laughs> 532, but yes. Yeah, Mike Mubilage. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> the DC police could have stopped this guy just by Buddha slapping him. Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah. Give them the, the five fingered starfish. Just, on yeah. the back. <laughs> it's, these are the people that the NKDV, I'm sorry, the FBI is after. Look at this guy wrapped in the flag here. He looks most likely to show you his kitten. I'm guessing he's got a kitten under that. Fl- and he's uh, here's another thing petting the kitten. All right. If you are actually storming the Capitol yeah. with the intent of taking down the government. Mm-hmm. Would they be wearing all of this stupid shit? This is absolutely ridiculous. It's a costume parade. It's exactly it's what it's really a costume parade. It's a costume parade that the other side is spinning up to make it sound much worse. And it let's be honest, it's a bunch of dumbasses. They, yeah. they were just dumbasses. 
Should you lose 20 years of your life because you suffer from dumbassitis, especially if no, there's nobody gets hurt, nobody dies, and there really isn't much damaged property? I think that is way overkill to me. And you can actually tell by the sentence what's going on in the background. They want to send a message That's to exactly punish to anyone who dares say, this is fucked up. Yep. And there That's you have exactly it. what they're doing. It's called chilling. Yes, chilling what they're effect. doing is chilling the American public. Now, uh, I don't think it's working. It's having the opposite effect because they did not account for Americans. Marxist is inherently a European ideology and it relies on a European mindset. Europeans as a whole, as a people, since about 52 AD. Bunch of conformists. Are monarchists. Yeah. And are used to being ruled. Americans are not particularly fond of being ruled, even today. We, we're, we're not into the whole being ruled thing. Yeah. So photograph 527. <clears throat> what do you see there? Because you and I have both been here a whole bunch of times. This guy who is the most dangerous man alive and wanted by the NKDV, I mean the FBI, he's being gassed. Yes. I know that face because I've made it a whole bunch of times. Oh, damn it. Oh, it's not just coming out of your face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, here's the other thing. Is we are actually expending a lot of resources to punish people that, let's be honest, they're pretty much harmless. But yet, yes. we are turning our back on actual violent, dangerous criminals. Entering our border, like oh, tens yeah. of thousands of Chinese. Yes. Crossing and your border. favorite, the Congolese, the, the, yeah, the, the machete Congolese men. And the Senegalese and the Cameroonians. Yeah, yes. the machete guys. We'll get to those guys later. Maybe we'll have a barbecue, have a snack. I'd rather not. Let's not. So guy in <laughs> floppy hat here looks more likely to break out in a Zach Brown band performance <laughs> on the porch of the Capitol <laughs> building. Say that. He looks like a Zach Brown band member. Yes, he does. The guy next to him with the glasses on there and his hoodie and the hat pulled up, that guy is clearly stoned as fuck. Yeah. That guy is clearly stoned. Right, hold, hold your thought. Jim, what, what were you going to say, Jimmy? Oh, I've had a thought and I lost it. All right. I was going to say, uh, for the uh, barbecue, I'll bring the sauce. <laughs> All right. Sauce. All right. Good. Let's let's move I along. Like that. We're, we are moving along. I mean, this is insane. I mean, listen, I have no idea why so many Americans are so out of fucking touch. It's, it, it's astonishing. So gullible. Well, it, it, it falls back on the, the five fences. Yes. I mean, they're too comfortable. We have lived in a country where you have your city police, county police, mm -hmm. state police, yep. federal police, yes. and the military. So you're everybody in this country surrounded by five rings of protection. And they bought the media, and they're literally piping in horrible elevator music to try to fool you all. Yes. And a lot of guys out there, it's actually working yeah. up until the point you can't feed your family or buy fucking gas. We're getting there now. Yeah, unfortunately. Now. I know people up in the rural areas right now that are struggling at all just to feed their families. Correct. And w listen, man, once you can no longer eat or feed your family, that's when a lot of people wake up historically. Yeah. We are... At any given time, that Holodomor that I talked about where they starved out those families, what they did is went in and they shut down their ability to produce grain. They shut down their ability to produce livestock. All of these things are happening right now. Yeah, they're happening. Right all now. happening right now. Uh, their mm -hmm. ability to farm at all, their ability to grow anything. And then all of a sudden, they shut everything off because they had control and they starved tens of millions of people we are at any given time. We are three days away from that level of pandemonium of pandemonium Correct. and shutdown. And once that starts, the average person can go. What is it? Two days without water, really? Well, w without water, I think it's three days, and you can do like a month without food. Really, though. Well, it, it all depends. 
It, it, depends, it depends on the person. So you got it two to three days without water. But I'm talking the normal person who's just Joe Blow. Pop and I and guys like us, we've been through all of that shit. We can figure it out pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. The normal person is going to start panicking immediately. Correct. In the suburbs and in the urban areas, that's going to come apart quickly. It's going to start in the urban areas first, yeah. and then it's going to wave out into the suburbs. Yeah. Um, most people were rural at the time of the Soviet. Most people were rural. They did not live in the cities. That's why those were the ones who died of the starvation there. They were able to shut down those farms and everything. Most people today are urban or suburban. Correct. Once that food goes, you're going to get people that the true colors will start to show. Yeah. You will get people who just shut down, who will just check well, one, check one out. you get the quitters. Yep. There's, there's only a certain amount of people that are just say, fuck it. Yep. Yeah. And then you got the people who are going to run. Yeah. I'm, I will probably be one of those guys who has to run in the beginning because I'm already making plans to get the hell out of it's here. Fall back, fall back positions. Yep. You know, and then, you, then you got the, the people who are going to rack up and pack up and stack up on you to get whatever they can to survive. Then you'll just get the pure, the ones that will go feral basically. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm they'll, talking about. They'll scavenge. Yeah. Well, you always get, you have the, you'll have the organized predators. Yes. But then you'll also have the just scavengers. And yeah. scavengers can pose more of a threat if they catch you by surprise. The organized predators will do things specifically to achieve goals. Correct. Now, I, I would say the organized ones are probably way more dangerous than the unorganized. In the long run. Yes. In the long run. Yeah, I would say that's true. Now, here's the thing. This whole 9-11, we're talking about American gulags and the American NKDV, I mean, FBI and all this stuff that's going on. Um, we were digging through the articles and I went like this. I have a screen, right? Do I have a screen? Uh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, we have a screen here. Okay, good. I went like this and I got this document from the Department of Defense, which is dated January 8th. This timeline is intended to memorialize the planning and execution efforts of the Department of Defense to address the violent attacks on the Capitol on January 6th, 2020. One, as I have reiterated many times, I was Army staff. I worked Army intelligence at a strategic level. You don't produce a document like this in 24 hours. No. It's the same thing after 9-11 yeah. with the Patriot Act. 28 days. That shit was already Two on somebody else's desk. A whole act ready to be signed, the whole nine yards. Well, I, I know this. I've, I've seen a lot of the old declassified orders. Yeah. In regards to nuclear sure. strikes on the United States, the, yep. the, the drafting policies yeah. for new soldiers, the reactivation of retired, mm -hmm. extending the age all the way up to fucking 60 for the draft. That is like a worst, worst case scenario. Yeah, yeah that's worst case scenario. Yeah, that's happening in Ukraine right now. Yeah. Um, the timeline, this is from DOD, January 8th, 2021. Thursday. December 31st, 2020, New Year's Eve. D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser and Dr. Christopher Rodriguez, D.C. Director of Homeland Security and Emergency Management Agency, deliver a written report to the D.C. National Guard to support D.C. Metro Police and Fire and Emergency Services. Okay, that's fairly innocuous. You got the election coming up. Everybody knows this, or the 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 inauguration coming up. Correct. On January 6th. This is reasonable. Acting Secretary of Defense confers with the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the Secretary of the Army on the Mayor's written request. Uh, first of all, hang on. I'm sorry. The Secretary of the fucking Army? The Joint Chiefs. Yeah. You cannot. I'm sorry. You're not going to be able to get them to come on board that quickly without the President cracking the whip on them. What? Why are we considering using the American military against American citizens on American soil on an inauguration day? Yeah. Joint Chiefs of Staff, for those of you who don't understand, that's Lottie Dottie everybody. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard, actually. And the Coasties, yeah. And the Coasties. Very competent guys. I like the Coasties a lot. I always rip on the Coasties, but they are proficient. They're really good. Yeah. They're really good. Um. Sunday, January 3rd, DOD confirms with Capitol Police that there is no request for DOD support. Okay, so they back that off. Uh, the 
what was the a acting secretary of defense meets with cabinet members to discuss DOD support for law enforcement agencies and potential requirements for DOD support. They just said they didn't need DOD support. Mm -hmm. DOD keeps injecting themselves. Acting Secretary of Defense and Joint Chiefs of Staff meet with the President. President concurs in activation of the D.C. National Guard to support law enforcement. Now, hang on. They That's actually, reasonable. he offered them 10,000 National Guard troops, yes. and they turned them down. That's correct. Nancy and, Pelosi specifically turned them down. And they and they chopped out part of that testimony where they had an actual witness say, no, Trump did offer 10,000 troops. So they're lying to us already en masse. Yes. Are and we are we shocked here? Here's the DOD orders for all of this stuff to get the uh, National Guard to support them. Correct. So all the way here to January 5th, Mayor Bowser delivers a letter addressed to the acting attorney general, acting secretary of defense and secretary of the army confirming there are no additional support requirements from DC. DC 225 255 National Guard arrive in DC and begin to manage traffic control points. Mm -hmm. Now we're using them. Well, the, first of all, that 255, mm -hmm. and now this is just rumor control, but that was already set in place. Yes. Like 90, at least 90 days out. That's normal to use them, though. Yes. But what didn't happen when the National Guard was offered up and they refused them, none of those troops came. No. And. and I, in my opinion, they wanted January 6th to happen. Absolutely wanted They it. wanted it to happen to be like some kind of event to try to get the people in the middle to come to their side. And I'm going to be honest, they're they're failing. Yeah. It's actually waking up more people that are moving towards the right. Well, that and it's totally not like Nancy Pelosi's daughter had a film crew following her and Pelosi the entire fucking day. HBO film crew. Yep. Yeah, how the fuck does that even happen? That is absolutely correct. Now, having been in on planning, as a matter of fact, we were doing planning during this time. I had been doing planning the entire week prior to this event myself. Uh, all of our exit routes, where all of the hospitals were, where the police stations were, so we could get our people to cover and get them to security. Um, we knew where a local helicopter pad was because General Flynn had access to that kind of asset. And... Uh, any way to get our people to safety, I sat down with the heads of all of the different teams and planned every single escape route out of the city that we could get. <clears throat> we ended up using primary because it wasn't that bad before no. stuff kicked off, but yeah. we, we ended up using primary. Um, Wednesday, January 6th, Army Sec our Acting Secretary of Defense and Joint Chiefs of Staff reviewed DOD plan to support law enforcement agencies so at this point, you've got chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the Secretary of Defense and DOD sitting down, participating in tabletop exercises regarding DOD contingency emergency response operations. Hmm. This is it's a smoking gun. Planned. Yeah. This is this, this is document here tells me that they knew this kind of thing was going to go down two reasons okay they're table topping at 11 30 a.m three hours before all of this really turns into a shit show when do you table top uh two or three weeks prior way the fuck back here yeah like and you, you're not you, table topping an hour before no no and you table top so you can get courses of action what this is is them discussing what they're going to do correct that's what this tabletop is because you don't run through possible contingency scenarios two hours before you go out the damn well, door. Well, no, hang on. That is not a thing. No, it's not a thing if you're fucking competent. That's true. I I've seen some shitbag officers wait till the last minute and fuck it up three ways to Sunday. Yeah, that's true. Oh, wait, wait. There is one exception, one unit in one military. The fucking AC the, the fucking SAS and their napkins and uh, felt tip markers. Oh yeah, <laughs> I've sat in a couple of SSA SAS briefings when I was in Iraq, and I'm like, they're madmen. Are you fucking crazy? That's it. That's your whole op order. Somebody's gonna die here. All right, all right, Tom, you're going that way here, and they'll literally felt pen on a piece of paper. And you, Harry, you take him over there and get the pinky over there with the fifty on it. All right, we good? Yeah, we good. All right, off. We'll go on my go. 
<laughs> that's it. That's and, it. Yeah. And they're, but they're, the difference is they're that professional. Yes. They're, they're really, really, really good. Uh, anyway, right. for them to be table topping two hours for DOD and Joint Chiefs, who are bureaucrats. Correct. To be table topping at that hour tells me that these were planned events and they were putting their pieces in place. Sec Army at 1334 hours, that's 134 for you Air Force personnel. Sec Army phone call with Mayor Bowser in which Mayor Bowser communicates request for unspecified number of additional forces. She's got National Guard on hand. Why is she calling the Secretary of the Army? Commanding General DC, uh, the DC National Guard. Walker phone call at 1349 hours. Now, here's a question. With Capitol Police Chief Sund. We communicated with Chief Sund as well. How, how many guys are in the D.C. National Guard? I believe it's two brigades. I mean, that's a lot of motherfuckers for a small area like that. I'm just, this is, I'm just asking. No, no. It's, yeah, no, I get it. But they, they do use them for events, obviously. Uh -huh. And then you've got Third Herd, Third Infantry, who is the Tomb Guard and the President's bodyguard detail yeah, yeah. but Third even herd. here in michigan we've got maybe combat power like maybe a regiment if we're lucky really? that's small yeah it, it like they they got rid of company f425 my old airborne unit because it was too expensive okay okay and you DC, know i believe has one combat brigade with its support elements and then one support brigade. All right. Well, we'll have to combo, look, et cetera. We'll have to look that up because I'm sure we can find a ballpark number. It might, on, might on be it. battalions. I could be wrong. Uh, I could uh, be wrong. But I know it's silly. I, I, Michigan's got maybe, maybe six combat battalions. Yeah, but we have 6,000 hunters or 6 billion hunters in the woods in the woods. Uh, I know. I know. <laughs> so this is the DOD's timeline. We got this uh, on the air. I mean, on uh, off of a security clearinghouse that has all the documents to it. And Jimmy, if you can throw the link up to this, the January 6th clearinghouse, it's got some really interesting documents in it. We just stumbled to that DOD thing and I started reading it and I realized that this was planned. A lot of this whole thing was planned. Correct. L listen, when you look at the timeline, you can tell that they planned for this to happen because if they had got their 10,000, hell, even if they got a thousand soldiers on board to surround the Capitol, none of this would have happened. Yeah. None of it. Yep. So I'll just say well, that that, and it's totally not like, uh, you know, they put up that entire whole fencing for the uh, state of the union when it wasn't needed. Yeah. Because the only know, people that the only people that were getting arrested was the uh, the gold star uh, father of this marine that was killed in the Afghanistan withdrawal. He was the only person arrested and charged. So uh, here's the thing with Bolshevik or totalitarian dictator type governments, and I will differentiate between the two. A Bolshevik government is a conglomerate government of a parliament, essentially. It is a group of 80 to 100, typically, who rule by fiat, mm -hmm. whereas a dictatorship, obviously, is just a single guy. Mm -hmm. They all have one thing in common, <clears throat> though. There is a high, high level of narcissism, a high level of paranoia, and a high level of psychopathy. No. 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 And Stalin oh. didn't whack one third of his military officers before World War II because you know they deserved it. I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't there. I couldn't tell you. It's, yeah, they, well, basically, one of the main reasons Russia got his ass handed to him for the first two and a half years of World War II. Yeah, Stalin had a bunch of his officers people, whacked yeah, because because they're paranoid. Nuts. Yeah, that, you, it's, you said it right. Paranoia. Yeah, right there. It's a key feature of governments like this. And we have seen it over and over again as they put up barricades and fences. When I was seven years old, my parents took me on a school field trip. It was a school field trip that my parents went with to Washington, D.C. And I remember just walking through the Capitol yeah. and just walking through the Supreme Court and just walking through the Smithsonian. There were no barricades in yeah. the 70s. Yeah. This didn't exist. 
none of this existed at all. This well, is a very recent turn of Bolshevik events. Well, also, you went there with your mother and father. Oh. So what are oh, we yeah. saying here? Oh, yeah. You destroy the family, you get a bunch of savages. Yeah. Now I see it. Oh, that could be. That could be. Yeah. Could be. That's why we have all that shit in place now. That's, the, it's the well, felony that, factories that, that in the Bolsheviks that doesn't oh there's that but the felony factories yeah. just keep dropping these pups that are going to wind up useful sure. idiots or in prison yeah yeah it's 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 both of these are marbles in the same bag of marbles yep I'm just saying yeah because there's a lot of pieces to it but these are all pieces of it we've got this Bolshevism going on we've got fatherless families we have the products of fatherless families the the violent for the feral fornification trophies. I like it. Mm. Feral fornification trophy. Yeah. So we go over here to yet another ABC News is going to tell you all about January 6th, three what's the, years later. What's what? the date on this? This one. January 5th, 2024. Is, uh, so this is yep, brand new. This, this is brand new. Three years later, January 6th, by the numbers, more than 1,200 charged, more than 460 in prison for role in capital attack. Prosecutors have secured more than 718 Guilty pleas in the January 6 cases. This is exactly what I was talking well, about. Well, here's the thing. Uh, you can almost guarantee most of those took a plea deal. They're terrified. Yeah. They're terrified. Most of these people went there to just go, Ray, I'm at D.C. Next thing you know. Next boom. thing you know, they're being put through a gulag process. They're being terrified. Look, for a normal Joe to go through, I wouldn't want to do more than a day or two in solitary. I'm good. I don't need to go there at all. Well, no, yeah, I know, but we could handle it. Joe Blow in solitary for a couple of months, he's going to tell you anything you want. You're probably he's right. He's going to tell you, and that is what that isolation shit is for. Mm -hmm. It breaks because down. Because they'll do anything <clears throat> for the barest hope of getting set free, getting back to their own reality. Most of them will do any. Every man has a breaking point. Yeah, and listen, I'm, I'm probably in there as well at some point yeah i mean i'm not superhuman i'm just a dude like anyone else we have a little more tolerance to it is what i'm getting yeah, yeah. You, we we might last a couple of days whereas joe in two days is like clawing at the walls well you know seer school will, i'm just giving names we'll train think. you for that yeah i'm just giving raw numbers i actually use that when divorce court when uh, the judge threatened to throw me in jail because i kept coming back for more time yeah and i'm like okay i've been to seer school you can throw me in jail, yeah. but guess what's going to happen? My commander is going to raise holy hell, and you're going to wind up with Jag down here asking questions. Do you want that? Yeah. It's like, oh, let's talk in chambers. Yeah, <laughs> we're, going, <laughs> we're, going, we're going in camera. Yeah. In three years since January 2021, assault on the uh, U.S. Cal assault on the U.S. Capitol, federal prosecutors have charged more than 1,265 defendants across nearly all 50 states in D.C. and secured sentences of incarceration for more than 460 people. The person writing this article is thrilled to be writing this. Correct. He is thrilled to be taking the side of justice. And those bad, bad people who stormed the Capitol, they need to be punished. I've seen people, particularly Hollywood celebrities and media talking heads, say that these people should be killed. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of kind of like the people who said, if you don't take the facts, you deserve to die. Yes, exactly. It's the precise same mentality. In remarks Friday, NKDV had, I mean, Attorney General Merrick Garland described the Justice Department's pro sprawling probe of the Capitol attack as one of the largest and most complex and resource-intensive investigations in our history. The federal government has weaponized and mobilized to go after Susie Homemaker, a stoned guy, and a member of the Zach Brown Band. <laughs> <laughs> Just to hear it put like that. I'm sorry, it's not funny, but it's funny. The mighty power of the United States government is going after fat slappy boy. Wow. Yeah. Well, that we have to look back at their treatment of Ray Epps, the guy yeah. that was literally in the street the night before saying, We need to take the Capitol. We need yep. to do this. We need to do that. He was the guy. That led the charge to the one dude flipping his MAGA hat backwards, which was actually, which may or may not have been a quote unquote call sign or so that Aunt, Aunt Quifa could uh, point each other out. They started shaking the barricades. They started pushing forward. Mm -hmm. What happened to Ray Epps? 
oh, you need to leave him alone. He's just an old guy. He didn't know what he was doing. He literally called for planning yeah, the attack. I, I watched the videos. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. I want to make yeah. a quick announcement here. Go ahead. All right. You guys like this content, and I want to keep making this content, but I'm going to see, I need to see more likes. Give this a thumbs up and share this video and subscribe on Rumble and YouTube. We need the help. Also, for the most part, this unit has, this, this channel, for the most part, has been demonetized. It's true. I have a lot of people that go, I see commercials on your stuff. Yes, they are, but we're not getting paid for it. That's correct. All right. Um, yeah. Compared to what we used to pull down before we got uh, shadow banned, we're literally making one-fourth of what we used to do just on this channel. So any little bit you can send in to help goes a long way, and I'm thanking you in advance. All right. Sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Along with all of these, uh, another 171 have been found guilty at trial or otherwise convicted. The D.C. U.S. Attorney Office said, well, 467 right. individuals have been sentenced to period, periods of incarceration. Hundreds of others have been sentenced for lesser offenses. All right, go down. Let's look at this picture here. For yeah, right. yeah, let's look at this. Yeah, you see that picture right there? Mm -hmm. That picture scares the living shit out of the 30-pound brains that are pulling the strings here yes. because they know. They have to be very, very gingerly and slowly methodical to turn these people off. And if they keep doing what they're doing, these numbers are going to grow. Let me point out something else. See that mass right there? Mm -hmm. If they had wanted to take that Capitol There's building... There's fuck all you could do about it. There would have been nothing you could do. Yeah, you would have to have pre-positioned machine gun nests and all of the bells and whistles to include minefields and concertina uh, wire. I'm using air support against a, a crowd that large. Yeah, I would. I would want air support. I wouldn't want to be within probably a thousand meters of that. No, because that is one. If, that's if a whole wrong. bunch of whoop ass right there. Yeah. And if you think a thousand meters is, oh, you could get closer than that, that mass right there will cover a hundred meters before you can reload your first magazine and you've hit maybe three of them. Yep. You're not wrong. That mass right there. And this is another way, you know, that this was not an insurrection. If that mass wanted that Capitol building, there would be nothing they could have done about it. And they would, yeah, it, it's, fuck all you could do about nothing it. Nothing at all. I mean, in that picture, there's what, 6,000 people? Yep. And uh, I didn't actually see this crowd. I saw the amount of people walking towards there. There was like 50, 60,000 people. Yes. Yes. And that's when the stringers started to call in stuff. And that's when we pop smoke. Yeah. That's, that's when I say get the principles out. The harshest sentence handed down as part of the DOG's investigation was for Proud Boys leader Enrique Terrio, the white supremacist Hispanic man married to a black woman, who was sentenced to 22 years in prison last September after being found guilty on charges of seditious conspiracy and other felonies. Founder of the anti-government group, extremist group, the Oath Keepers. Well, first of all, a group he, he, of veterans. He did not start Oath Keepers. Oath Keepers no. has been around since, what, the 80s? Yes. I remember... I remember them actually coming to my barracks on on one of those days where we do the mandatory briefings. Yeah. And they're like, hey, when your service is done, your service isn't done. You can join the Oath Keepers. We're all about supporting the Constitution. You've already taken that oath, so it still applies. The door's open for you guys. Yep. I, I said in on two of those briefings, I was 19 years old and 21 years old. Yep. When I got out, I briefly joined the Oath Keepers when I was in Florida. Uh, they didn't do anything, really. No. Yeah. So I think I paid like one year's dues, and then I was like, you guys are kind of lame. Let, let's so, face it. If you served in the military and you took the oath, you are an Oath Keeper. Correct. I'm sorry. Yeah. And they had a good They had a good pitch. Yeah. They well, good yeah, pitch. yeah, they did. But they, they ended up not doing anything, and I just kind of walked away from it after a while. I was like, meh. Yeah, I know. I'm disinterested. But I got you, but in current year, yeah, and they have to stop on the oath keepers and other organizations like this because they have the ability to rally numbers. Yes, you have to crush them. You are exactly correct. Yes, I was about to go exactly there. It is organizations like this that these Bolsheviks and the NKDV fear the most 
because I'm sure the FBI. It's amazing. Fear the most. A couple of old vets literally are thinking in tandem. Who knew? I know. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> Um, because we do organize instantly. If you have 50 normal dudes in a room, they're going to walk around and they're going to have some conversations and stuff like that. If you put 50 vets in a room, they'll immediately break down into their original units. They'll immediately find the guys who were in their MOSs. Officers. Uh, yep. And then you break up by job. Usually, you know, anyone who is airborne qualified goes to the cool guy group. Yeah, I got you. Or or by campaign. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. good. And then the younger guys will immediately show deference to the older guys. Mm-hmm. That if you put 50 veterans in a room, that's what's going to happen. Exactly. How do we know this? I've been to a VFW hall. Yeah. I've been to quite a few. There you go. That's, a, that's what happens. The American Legion, the VFW, yep. the uh, what, the Vietnam Vets of America. They all. It, it's it's literally programmed into us from the very beginning when you first go to basic training now, this is this is a favorite here the january 6 attacks caused millions of dollars in damages to the capitol building and its grounds the latest report from october 22 2022 estimates losses at more than 2.8 million i, I highly doubt that, that amount reflects among other things damage to the capitol building and grounds costs and certain costs borne by the u.s capitol police and then they show a picture of a guy walking through the hall not touching anything who happens to be carrying a confederate Confederate flag flag. now i myself i don't have a problem with people who put up the confederate flag it's obviously white supremacy when i was when i was in the service i would literally do in you know first sergeant inspections platoon sergeant inspections and i think maybe in all of the time i did that i asked two guys to take shit off the walls one was a trophy from a woman with a double left breast. Mm-hmm. And the other one was a set of panties because he was the center stage attraction at a bachelorette party. That is yeah. it. I would have made them put them in shadow boxes so they were properly displayed. Now, I'm walking through there. I'm like, I do, whose bra is this on the wall? <laughs> Can I get the backstory, please? I need the backstory. Put it in a shadow box. <laughs> I just said, just take it down, put it in the door. <laughs> but, uh, you, said, uh, you said how how much damage was occurred at the two point eight million. million. And can anyone remind me how much damage was done during the summer of love in 2020? Uh, it's estimated somewhere between two and four billion dollars. Correct, and a lot of stuff burned down. Yes. Uh, the FBI still continues to track down more than 80 rioters suspected of assaults on law enforcement during the riot. Okay, at this point. In a normal world, if I get into a fight in the street, right, yep. and the cops do not locate me, a year after that, the statute of, statute of limitations wears out. Okay. For just simple public disorderly, it's a year. It's a year? <laughs> for, for brawling in public, basically. Oh, dude, I wouldn't even. All right. That's just a side story. Okay. Three years later, they're trying to track these guys down. We got all sorts of side stories. We should do a side story night. (laughs) U.S. U.S. Attorney for D.C. Matt Graves warned in a news conference this week, however, that the time could be running out for charging many of the suspects involved in in, in the attack. Statutes of limitations for many of the charges deployed by prosecutors will expire in January 2026. Bullshit. Well, here's the thing about the statute of limitations in the federal government. I got hung up on that AR rap program. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And they were coming after me full force mm-hmm. two years after the, the federal statute of limitations had run out. Really? And, yeah, and they were literally they had some bullshit excuse for times of war, they could extend it. I, and, uh, Show me that law. That would yeah. have been easy for an attorney to rip apart. Well, th- here's the thing. They actually, I, I had an attorney. And they made my attorney sign a non-disclosure not to share the evidence with me. That's the dirty shit that this government is doing. They can't do that. They did it. I know they did that, but they can do know, that. That's color of law. But I'm an evil fucking genius. Mm-hmm. I'm not a liar. Mm-hmm. I literally wrote the whole thing down with the evidence. Yep. And I had it overnighted to the brigade commander whose decision it was to either put it in my local file or put it in the I'm going to fuck you in the ass microfish. Mm-hmm. He literally called me and said, this is complete bullshit. Local file. And there I was go. like, there you go. 
But still, I had I was looking at a general letter of reprimand, a Gomar. Oh, that's yeah, you're done. Going in my permanent file. A Gomar is is a, I would have been done. Yeah. On this I wouldn't have been able to retire. They would have fucked me up bad. Yeah. But they, local they file given you a general discharge. Yeah. I got the local file. But that is the shit that our government does. And guess what? I am what's gonna happen here, but right before they go to the draft. They're going to restart a program similar to the AR RAP or the RAP program, which stands for Recruiter Assist Program. And I highly advise no one to participate because they will come after you for that cash. And the reason they came after me, two of the people I put in this in that system didn't remember my name six years later. Go figure. What are you to do? There you go. What are you going to do? All right. Sorry. We went off the that's, o- that's okay because uh, January 6th rider was convicted and sentenced in secret. No one will say why. They didn't remember his name either, I'm sure. How the hell do you convict somebody in secret? Oh, wait a minute. Isn't that a totalitarian kind of fucking it is, thing? It is totalitarian as fuck. That's that's total dictatorship right there. It is there. dictatorship. That is absolutely uh, Bolsheviki yes. in this particular case. We differentiated large group governing, single guy governing. We're in we're in bullshit Vic territory yeah, we, here. We are. We are in bullshit Vic territory. And here's the picture again with all the people at the Capitol building. Look, if they wanted to take that building, nobody could have stopped them. I'm gonna be honest. I am glad I didn't go anywhere near that thing. Oh man, so am I. I'm glad that none of our none of our crew went anywhere near that. We got them out of there fast. Hundreds of rioters have been charged, convicted, and sentenced for joining the mob attack on the U.S. Capitol building. Now it's a mob attack. That's a mob attack. This is the AP News, again with the language. Unlike their cases, Samuel Lazar Samuel Lazar's appears to have been resolved in secret, kept under seal with no explanation, even after his release from prison. Lazar, 37, of Afrata, Pennsylvania, was arrested in July 2021 on charges. He came to the Capitol dressed in tactical gear and protective goggles. Not a crime and used chemical spray on officers who were desperately trying to beat back the angry Donald Trump supporters. Oh, my, how dramatic sounding. There's no public record of a conviction or a sentence in Lazar's court docket, but the Bureau of Prisons told the Associated Press that the man was released from federal custody this week after completing a sentence for assaulting or resisting a federal officer. Lazar was sentenced in Washington's federal court on March 17th to 30 months in prison, but there's no public record of such a hearing. So now, now why uh, are there no federal attorneys attacking this like a school of fucking piranhas? Because yep. that does not pass muster. Yep. I'm sorry. That doesn't pass muster. Not in my book. In our world, in the in the secret squirrel world, if a guy did shit that involved classified material you would go to a closed court martial mm-hmm. and those would be sealed, but they were sealed for reasons of classified documents for classifications. Yeah. We're talking about a guy. Yeah. Joe shit, the rag bag. Joe shit, the rag. Bag. It's just normal dude. Yep. Questions about Lazar's, Lazar's case have been swirling for months, but the details of his conviction and sentence have not been previously reported. We're managing to hold up on time here pretty well. We're doing pretty I, I, good. I had to look over. So um, I'm going to skip over that particular one because this is the one that I want to get to right now. I'm not going anywhere. Go away. No, hang on. Hang on. Well, no, wait. This is Washington Times. They want you to subscribe. Oh, I think I can get by that real fast. Yeah, we got to put that in what uh, see. the Wayback Machine or Archive. Uh, no, uh, this should be Archive Command V. Save. save and fuck you. There Washington. we go. January six convicts released after Supreme Court takes up challenge of Fed's use of obstruction cards. Uh, charges. At least two January 6th defendants got out from behind bars because the Supreme Court is reviewing the legitimacy of charging them with obstructing an official proceeding. Let's talk obstruction of an official proceeding. Can you arrest somebody and throw them in jail and then just leave them there without charges or due process? Well, they did that in Wayne County from the dude we had on the show about a year and a half ago. Yeah. 
Yep. But this is at this the, is the federal fucking federal government. government. This is Joe Podunk fucking court yes. in Wayne County. Yes. Yep. I'm, These starting, guys, I'm starting to get spun up here, man. We're going to get spun up again. Oh, my God. All right. Prosecutors All right. have charged more than 300 of nearly 1,000 January 6th defendants with violating the obstruction statute. At least 152 people were convicted or pleaded guilty to obstructing the official proceeding. More than 100 have been sentenced. The proceeding they're talking about is the inauguration of Biden to the presidency. It didn't obstruct that they could have carried it out the people did not storm that portion nope. of the capitol building on january 10th a small handful got through the shaman got through with his video crew and the one air force uh, sergeant and the one they air force executed sergeant. yeah yeah on january 10th u.s district judge amit meta ordered the release of thomas adams who was convicted of obstructing an official proceeding while the supreme court reviewed the issue most of these people are being held without bail, without a trial, without charges, without any due process at all. There are people who have been held for two years now. Well, it's actually a little bit more than two nothing. years. Yeah. And some of these guys are being, they haven't been charged. Yeah. They haven't been arraigned, yeah. but they're rotting in solitary confinement. Yep. That is the word that I have been told. Yes. I would like to see that in writing. If anyone can find yeah. that, Email us the links to redonkless12gmail.com. There is a lot of evidence that they have been abused by the prison staff as well. Yeah. The judge reasoned that Adams wouldn't flee the country and it was possible the Supreme Court would side with Mr. Mr. Fisher, which would also vacate Adams' conviction. The Supreme Court decision to review Fisher means, at a minimum, this case poses a close question. So what's happening here is they're saying that the FBI, the federal government, the NKDV, uh, I'm sorry, FBI, is misusing the obstruction charge just to keep people in prison, which we pretty much know is going on. None of these cases are being released in the media, really, with any reliability at or all. Or maybe they are, but since the media has been paid for, they're not covering it. It's the angle with which they're covering it as well, which is what we went over tonight. Yes. The media is painting these people as criminals who are getting off. They're, they're getting off. You don't know how fortunate you are that they were letting you go. <laughs> um, not that I'm angry about what are you gonna do, any man? of this stuff at all. And NBC News is not much better. Appeals court tosses January 6th sentence and ruling that can affect more than 100 cases. Ruling by a three-judge panel raises the possibility that more than 100 defendants resentenced over their role in the attack on the Capitol building again crowd high we can take this building we didn't yeah like there's there's easily fifty thousand people look the same stock photo yeah that's interesting well it's almost as if the nbc news the abc news and the api all get their news from a single source yeah the 30 pound brain that right that signs their checks i love the youtube video where you get 40 different stations across the nation all saying precisely the same thing yeah that's not suspicious favorite. at all. Not suspicious at all. Federal Appeals Court on Friday tossed out a portion of a January 6th defendant's sentence that could affect more than 100 other cases related to the 2021 attack. The ruling by a three-judge panel looked at a lower court's enhanced sentencing of a defendant over substantial interference with the administration of justice on the day Congress was certifying Biden's victory. So it wasn't the inauguration. It was just the certification of the victory. <clears throat> yep. The appeals court ruled that the administration of justice does not encompass Congress's role in the electoral certification process. They, what they're saying is Congress isn't playing a role in the act of justice when they certify an election, which makes perfect sense. Correct. The ruling potentially opens the door to the resentencing of January 6th defendants who were hit with similar sentences to that of Larry Brock, who appealed his case to the Washington court. The panel upheld Brock's conviction over all so there's over a hundred people at least that are being held on specious charges this is straight up bolshevik and kvd monkey business this is it's 100 kgb i mean that's yeah. how that that's exactly what they do. I, I mean i've read the spy books yeah okay yeah. that's the one number two i've talked to a lot of people who came from actual ussr before it yes. went under yep and i mean you want to talk about a government having absolute authority over everything in your life. 
That's what's happening in China now, and it used to be in the USSR. I don't know how Russia is now. They're on a war footing, so it might be similar, but that is unacceptable. Yeah, it's uh, happening here in the USA. It's starting well, it's to happen supposed here, yes. To happen. Reagan said, this is the last bastion. This is the last hope. There's nowhere else to run. That's and right. It looks like we're coming apart at the seams. We must apply the guideline as written and is Brock's interference with one stage of the electoral college vote counting process, well, no doubt endangering our democratic processes. We're a constitutional republic. Democracy is chaos. not our government form. Yeah, democracy actually devolves into chaos relatively quickly. And by the way, for those of you who don't fully understand this, since we were talking about Marxism earlier, capitalism is a Marxist concept. It is a straw man that Marx created to attack the wealthy because he was jealous that he didn't have stuff too. Socialism is the politics of the weak-minded greedy and lazy come on let's just say the truth socialism is the waiting lobby for communism it really is the waiting lobby for communism there you go that's it's, it's the know, ideology, boil it down to grunt ideology of weaklings and greedy little bitches yeah all right so we're coming up on super chat so i see through. that i see that uh more than 100 cases defendants in january six cases had the enhancement applied to their cases so what they're saying is they applied too many charges and put these people in prison for no reason at all or or well actually when they do um uh, what is it modifications it's like you murder somebody you get 20 years but they turn into a hate crime and you get 60 right exactly yes they try they applied tried to apply the obstruction of justice to this thing which is just nonsense so the people behind all of this crap first of all secretary of state anthony blinken is for those of you who don't know secretary of state is involved in a lot of interesting things that I can't go into because of NDAs, but I'm sure you can figure it out. The attorney general, though, is the one that I really want to focus on. Mr. Merrick Garland is our barrier from the Soviet NKVD. Merrick Garland is the one behind most of this stuff. He's the one who chops off on it. He might not actually be making the exact decisions himself or making the calls himself, but uh -huh. at the end of the day, he's the one who chops off on all of this stuff. And I've watched this guy speak a couple of times. He is a petty little bureaucrat. He is vindictive. And it is my personal opinion, my personal opinion. Did I say that? My personal Personal opinion. opinion that he is a narcissistic sociopath. Listen, let's be honest. Most of the people who fight tooth and nail to get to this level, that's exactly what they are. Yeah, exactly. You want people in charge that go, I don't want to do this. Yes. I don't want to be this guy. Yes. You have to pick him then. Yes. If you want to have an even keel kind of thing going on, you got to pick the guy who doesn't want the fucking job and make him do it for a set amount of time. Yep. And then move on to the next guy. Years ago, I stumbled across one of the founders, and I have never been able to find it again, and I cannot remember who it was, but he essentially said, and I am just quoting, uh, a paraphrasing, politics should be a job one treats like mucking out a stall. Yeah. A dirty, nasty job that has to be done. Yep. And when you have done your time, you return to your normal, civilized life. And you hand the shit shovel to the next guy. You hand the shit shovel to the next guy. It is not meant to be a class, and it has become a ruling class in the United States of America. Absolutely correct. That and needs to, that needs to stop. Right now. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. We yeah, it's have a, the court of Louis the Sun King. Right, yes, hang on. Let Jimmy, Jimmy talk. I was going to say, it's uh, it's quite fascinating that we have all of these politicians that have been in for 5, 10, hell, 20, 30 years on a salary of, uh, what is it, like $174,000 or it something? It varies like that. between 175 and like 300K. Yeah. And uh, they the are worth. 80s. Biden's been around since 1991. Yep. Yeah. And, and they're, and they're multimillionaires. Yes. Correct. All of them. How. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care how well you do your job as a representative of our government. You do not become that rich off of a government salary. No, you don't. No. Just look at, you know, I'm just saying uh, if you if you're curious, you know, 
Check out uh, Unusual Whales on uh, Twitter. Uh, they post uh, quite a bit of information about uh, Nancy Pelosi's uh, stock trades. So yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, percent. I'm not a, I'm not a money guy. I'm not a stock trader or anything like that. But I'm just saying, if you guys want to make some money, fortunately, fortunately for you, I am. <laughs> there you go. And listen, she outperformed the market by like 51, 55 percent. Come on. All right, yeah. sorry. Sorry, we we need to get, finish this up so we, we hit the super We are finishing chat. up right now. I'm okay. going to sum it up real fast. Hundreds of Americans are being held in basically gulags by what basically amounts to an American NKDV. We have first stage Bolshevism right now. We are at the stage where the useful idiots who stormed the Capitol have been mopped up. The last of them, they're hunting them down. It is the biggest task force we have, even with the border, hemorrhaging Iranian terrorists, assassins, and Chinese infantry. Yep. The biggest task that Merrick Garland, head of the NKDV, I'm sorry, the Justice Department, uh, has is to hunt down these 80, what was it? We had a housewife. Mr. Fat Slappy and the Zach Brown Band guy and a stoner. <laughs> That's what we're hunting down. That is so stupid. But listen, man, if that isn't a symptom of our alphabet agencies being weaponized against us, I just don't know what is. And, I yep. and we're done. All right, let's get those super chats. All so, right, here. Again, uh, apologies for the uh, the audio issues I was having earlier. No, 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 it was, it was actually, on our end. It was on our, it was on our end. end. Don't worry about it. Was it. On your, oh, it was on your end. Oh, okay. But still, in the future. We had to call the 17th level wizard. Yeah, have a backup headphones and microphone just in case Murphy does show up and tie yeah, your shit. I, 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 I got my other mic plugged in, and I've got a heads, I've got a mic on my earbuds here, so I think we'll right. be good to go. But uh, All right, we'll start over here on uh, YouTube here. we got Demaster12 with $10. You have to cover this on Thought Thursday. Anita Sarkeesian, Wicked Witch Queen of Gamer and Gamergate and progenitor of woke video game consulting gifts, Griffs, hosted the, her themed 40th birthday party. The theme? Wedding. Nobody will have her. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's fantastic. I have to stage my own wedding because nobody will fuck me. What? <laughs> no, they'll, they'll bang her, but they're not gonna not gonna take it on for not at forty. She's no. done now. She's there's, done. There's a thousand. There's a thousand girls they go before. All right, let's, next yeah. one. Let's do this. Let's see. Uh, Sean St. George, four ninety nine. He says, uh, "I went through OPSEC planners, uh, OPSEC planners course in the mil in the army. First thing this first thing they said in class was congratulations." You're all on a list now. That's correct. That's I went absolutely through. correct. Yeah, I went through that. Mm -hmm. Yep, true story. See, uh, outcast of the maggot people, five dollars. Uh, what would Dexter do? Well, that's a whole, do not tempt me. That's another animal right there. Yeah, <laughs> we don't want to go there. Dexter would be a do you know, we're, I'm old. Steve is old. There's really fuck all we can do other than just point it out to people. The Schwarzenegger movie True Lies, where he's in the car with the used salesman and he breaks the guy's nose and it's just a daydream. I do that a lot. <laughs> yeah. So you got a smooth criminal next one with five dollars. Why has no one ever talked about Pelosi's daughter being in the right place at the right time in total coincidence? We just did. Yep. We just did. Yeah. Yep. Just mentioned that. And we got not a band account here, our favorite, favorite troll that loves to uh, give us money. <laughs> when will rema remaining mega extremist PGL two? <laughs> I did love that. I love that guy. Thank uh, you. And his second one here: Should mega be barred from serving in the military? Well, good luck with that. That's <laughs> over half the country. <laughs> They're already not making the recruiting numbers. Oh my god! Let's just yeah. make it worse. Yeah. I love that. Uh, guy. Oh, I want to hug him. It, it, his avatar is even Winnie the Pooh, so I'm sure he's extra ah, huggable. Yes. We get trolls, not a big deal. Uh, at least, at least this troll likes to throw us a shekel or two it's every cheerful. now and then. I like that though; it's a good natured <laughs> troll. Keep going. He's a good guy. Yeah. Uh, I got a Soylent Green with twenty dollars, saying J six was an insurrection is the equivalent of the Eighth Air Force flying over Germany during World War II with empty bomb racks. Pretty much. Yeah. Yep. Yep. 
Let's see. And we got a Kenj 1090 with our first We're Not Worthy of tonight with a $50 donation. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Thank you very much. Says, uh, if I could go back in time and erase any individual from history, it would be Karl Marx, hands down. Our, our, I'd argue, uh, I'd argue, get rid of Marx. You get rid of guys like Hitler and Mao. Fuck Marx. Let's, let, listen, I know we play that game all the time in our minds, but the universe is the universe. And even if you whacked him, somebody else would have stepped up and the name just would have changed, but the results probably would be very similar. Or worse. Or worse, yeah. The problem yeah. is we don't do anything about it when we see it. That's the biggest problem. Yep. Next. Yep. All right, we got a Mighty Mouse Malibu with ten dollars. Police have gone from serve and protect. Actually, it's protecting the serve to uh, extort and collect. Our local PD used to have some to have serve and protect on their cars. Now it's to serve with honor. Which mm -hmm. what a load of BS. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. You're yeah. Not wrong, that man. is. Yep, you're not wrong yeah. at all. But, uh, back, back the blue, right? Yeah, wrong. Sorry, they that lost my. Used to be they lost. Guy. They lost my support in 2020 and all during the scandemic and all that. Yep, fuck yep, yep. Uh, Demaster twelve with five dollars sent an email under the name Christian to Gmail with a super chat about Marx. Since YouTube won't let me post it with some optional longer reading. Oh yeah. Oh, excuse right. me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Oh, that one's uh, that, that's quite a long one there. That let's email. See. Yep. Yeah, we, might, we, uh, we will read that. Unfortunately, we have limited time during this. Yeah, that's because, right. uh, we want to get a little all bit, your chats. Yep, a little bit long there because we still got to go through uh, Rumble and all that good shit. So uh, we will uh, save that one for you there, uh, Demaster. Uh, uh, Alex Patino. Hey, hola, mi amigo. Uh, Marisa saying, "You give me a name." I, and they'll find a crime, even if even if it was grandma, no one was safe. That's Beria, yes, yeah, Beria. That was the USSR model for the KGB for yep. a long time. Yep. That's and we got a uh, Hodaka 07 with a uh, twenty dollars Canadian. It says, uh, "Hey, sixty three year old based boomer who is who just wants to be left alone, but I am prepared, uh, prepared in a rural place. I find uh, uh, several friends. We have lots of equipment." Love the show. Thank you. Outstanding. Share it. Uh, share the show. Share the videos. Share everything. Give us a goddamn <laughs> like and subscribe. All right. There you go. All right. And we'll jump over here to Rumble. Again, Rumble, you guys got to do the pop out chat, man, or at least separate super chats and all that good. But uh, let's see. Uh, first one here, we got uh, MX Stilgar. Uh, two dollars the headline should be political prisoners and where they are speak english properly yeah my bad <laughs> do not make me go full alt right <laughs> that's what we know no. now we used to call ourselves the grammar nazis but that has fallen out of fashion we are now the alt right <laughs> yeah now i'll I'll, I'll take some uh some heat for that when i was uh that's okay man you were in that, well, that night I may or may not have a, had a few beers in me before I made the stuff. Oh, allegedly. Oh, allegedly. Drive on. Keep going. Well, no. Uh, let's see. And we got a uh, Mick Top Mando coming in with two dollars. Saw this one earlier when I was scrolling up. Murphy loves giving Jimmy the big green we big green weenie. Sam's yeah. lube. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Murphy does have a thing for Jimmy's starfish. That's true. Yeah. Uh, well, it gets I, us all. What do you got? That what, I, I don't know what. I don't know what it is about Murphy and me and uh, our <laughs> really love hate relationship. There you go. Carry on. All right. Let's see here. We'll keep on scrolling through here through Rumbles. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, yeah. Rumble. Uh, anyone in the uh, the Rumble uh, or that works at Rumble? Uh, do a uh, super chat option so we don't have to scroll through a lot of shit. Well, not shit, but a lot of chats. So I guess. Be nice to our gentle listeners. <laughs> yeah, our we'll right. I'll, I'll be more gentle to them than Murphy is to me. So, <laughs> all right. And uh, uh, Mando coming back. Uh, theory: the weird costumes were because these guys were going to DC Comic Con after the voting. Not entirely impossible. Yeah, I mean it's possible. Yeah. Well, anything is probable and possible in this world. I mean, Jesus, 
Uh, it's only March, and holy fuck, how many stories have we seen? Quite a few. It's only going to get worse. This is going to be a crazy, crazy year. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. Yep. Uh, I think I think I found my new favorite screen name: International House of Whoop Ass. <laughs> okay. Okay. I like that. Yeah. Uh, chimes in with the dollar. Um, is what's happening in Pittsburgh true about the cops not patrolling after dark? Yes. 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 That is true. Yeah, so uh, if you're in uh, Pittsburgh, um, get a gun, get a lot of freedom seeds, and uh, prepare to protect yourself. That's right. Uh, you're uh, basically a purge. Yeah. Uh, let's see, got a uh, Cliff 31 idiot coming in. Uh, Pop. Yeah. Uh, the worst of the populace have replaced the five security rings of concrete and steel with onion rings and wrestling and boxing rings, right in circuses. And they are rotting with yes men and corruption. That's true. That's I can't argue with that. That is. And we got a killer B87. It was all pre-planned. Check out the electron election integrity pro project. I have heard of that. Yes. Actually, uh I've uh, talked to quite a few people that were in positions that said that was highly suspicious. And then you look at the odds of what happened happened. January sixth. No, no, the election. The election. The election. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. That's, the chances that's of that happening story. are astronomically against it being possible. Yes. You have a better right. chance of winning the Powerball, actually. Correct. Uh, actually, you have a better chance of winning the Powerball, getting eaten by a shark and struck by lightning and a plunger going up your asshole in the same time. <laughs> I don't oh. want to ever see the inside of your head, Jimmy. <laughs> it's it, it's a fun place. You just got to learn how to uh, bounce there off the right clouds wall. involved. I can tell that already. All let's, right. Let's yeah. move on. Let's move on. Uh, let's get a red pill. Uh, Dragon five dollars says, uh, thanks for the work and the content. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh yeah. Thanks. for uh, this. Cliff, Hell yeah. Share it, share it, share it. Damn it. Uh, cliff 31 88 coming back. Uh, the three letter agencies can trace all 1,255 people that were in DC during J six, whether they were participants or not but are not capable of finding a single person that will allegedly planted pipe things that go boom. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Not going to say you're wrong on that one. Yep. Uh, let's see. Got a uh, Tracy Var Jarbiden with one version version that word. Apologies. Uh, with a $100 super chat there. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're not worthy. We're not that's awesome. Thank you so much. They say great show, my guys. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Uh, it's got a anonymous coming in with twenty dollars. Thanks for all you. Uh, thanks, guys, for all you do. Here's a photo of my mother and grandfather in Vancouver from the nineteen fifties when the West was awesome. Nice. Feeling nostalgic. And he drops a link there. I will open that link up and let's see here. I will. Uh, what? Do we have to see. vent links before we can throw them up on the screen? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just, it's just. Oh, no, yeah. It's everyone's. Listen, yeah. after we got that old woman whisker biscuit thing. Yeah. No. Mm -mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This, this, this one's, this one's appropriate. This one is appropriate. Good. Okay. So. Oh, yeah. All right. There you go. So, Look at that. There's the, Look at that cutie. Outstanding. Nostalgia. Yeah. Outstanding. If only things were. Uh, could go back to the uh, the good times. Like well, that. they could if we brought back the nuclear. They can. Family. It's just going to be very messy. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I miss the days when you can give a woman the back of your hand and you don't get. <laughs> you're not that old. You're man. not that old. Joking, joking. Old. All right, all right. So that's a jest. Okay. There we go. Okay. Just poking fun. I never hit a woman. Oh man, I am. Uh, let's see. Uh, Cliff coming back with uh, another one. Uh, last one for me for the night. Patriot Front's ranks consist of entire of glowies. If it were truly, quote, regular Americans, you would see at least two or more fat bodies every time they showed up at a rally. One, uh, I have two points here. Uh, one, why is being in shape insta-fed? Um, I was not an insta-fed, and I was in extremely good shape when I got out of the military. And two, when did we mention? Well, in current, in current year, 
with a fast food slop shop and but there's point. a whole there's a whole movement of going back toward being in decent shape and remember the sharpies mm-hmm. the sharp skins yeah that was their thing being in really good shape hmm. okay and being fit and the other one is i don't remember mentioning patriot front but anyway uh, somebody we no, about it's oath keepers i think i heard that beer smiling. open in the background i heard a beer open i don't word or hear me on this Happy. channel for one drop of beer I gave up alcohol for the most part for the past 60 days. Ooh. Trying to regenerate my liver. Yeah. I'm going to go home and have a glass of meat. Now fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> Continue. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, next one here. We got a uh, Master ZX with $10 says donation formation. All oh. right. Oh, actually, uh, Cliff coming back again. Correction. You would see. Uh, have another $5 to round out the night. Stay awesome, gents. Jimmy. Play me out with the ball snap fart or poolside Pelosi. I'll let you decide. Oh my God. I know you won't disappoint. <laughs> well, seeing how as we don't have the ball snap, oh God. we're gonna we're gonna put on our swim trunks and we're gonna go spend some pool some time by the pool with Pelosi. I'm throwing up in advance. <laughs> Okay, get that off the screen. That's oh, I wish savage. I did have alcohol. Savage. Oh. All right. Uh, I just opened up a beer, and I'm going to have to have a shot of some apple crown to uh, get that image out of my body. Even, I can't even alcohol wash that out of my brain because I have a one-hour drive after this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's 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 get through uh, this. Here, yeah, and we're scrolling through the uh, rumbles Chicago. here. Uh, it's got a uh, MGTOW Mando coming back. I don't remember who said it. But there was a founding father who said that he saw the term in Congress as a term of servitude and glad it was ended. Yes. That's exactly how it That should. may be the same guy. Yeah. Yep. Uh, got a uh, Reynard 69. Nice. Uh, coming in. Oh. oh, excuse me. Socialism is communism while people still have freedom. Fascism is communism after those freedoms have been sold off. Communism is when those freedoms have been gaslit until people forget they exist. Well, I'm not going to say it wrong. That's actually quite wise. Well, worded. Yep. yep. Uh, I got uh, Frank Rizzo one with a $10. He's got a, he's got an eight with a capital D. So I'm guessing that's some kind of smiley face emoji there. I think so. I think so. <laughs> Doesn't ring I like balls. it. I like it. Uh, I got a professor Blake poo ass blaster 3000 coming in. Yeah. Uh, I think the two-way rifle range is going to start before the election, and I hope it does not. And I hope it does not. Just saying. I'm worried Pop- that you're right, and I yeah. hope you're wrong. Uh, well, first yeah. of all, uh, I do not want that to happen. New. You, a lot of people out there have no idea what they're inviting into their lives yes. if they want that to happen. Yes. I mean, my service is not graded on tours. It's graded on wars. And yep. uh, some of the fucking horrible shit that I saw in some of those war-torn countries, I do not want to see that happen here. Yep. Yeah, you don't know what you're asking for. Those of you yep. who think you want the two-way rifle range to start, straight up, you don't know what you're asking for. Yeah. Yep. Unless you have actually been there, you're you don't you don't want it. You don't want any of that. <laughs> you don't want it. And uh, he, he follows it up with the. Uh, Pop question. Are you a download Dan? Oh, hell no. Oh, what? That's like some kind of bisexual shit. No, I don't do any of that. I, 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 don't, I don't know, Pop. We've seen what happens in Vegas. It is so hateful. Dude, Jimmy, that was so well timed. <laughs> so that was so well timed. <laughs> I hate that one, but I'm giving you well part played. props there. Well that played. Was, uh, well played. You know what? I'm I th- I'm gonna play this one because uh we haven't seen it in a while. Where's that? Where's that? No one's in here. Where's hmm. that? Son of a bitch. There, that, there it is. That's brilliant, Jimmy. 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> there we go. Next one. Uh, let's see. Uh, next one. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Professor Blake Pooh Ass Blaster 3000 coming back again. Uh, it says, also cannot wait for Lord Zed this Thursday. Well, here's the thing. If you guys don't know, Blake's mother has suffered a, a stroke. A stroke. And she's in the hospital right now. Minor stroke. Yeah. Let's be clear. It's minor. But, you know, hopefully we'll have Blake here on Thursday and, and everything won't fall through. But I'm just, look, I'm not a liar. I'm not good at deception when it comes to stuff like this. I'm just telling you guys up front what's going on. Family first, man. Yeah, family first. Family. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Next one, got Mando coming back again. Uh, Deception Barricade in the live action movies had to be, had to put, pun, had to punish and enslave. That seems to fit the incurrent FBI. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Uh, let's see, got a uh, Barrett Barrett McMusing uh, with five dollars. Thank you guys for getting the truth out. Thank you, Barrett. Thank you. Thank uh, you. So much. I know that guy. Hell yeah! And, uh, next one, uh, Paladin BR with ten dollars. Uh, keep in mind that the J six crap effectively stopped any of the co uh, Congress critters from objecting to certification. They wouldn't have anyway. They're all bought and paid for. Pence no. was already bought and paid for at that point. None of the Congress members would have been on that side. Yeah, yeah it, it's totally not like there was a coin exchange after, you know, the certification was given to Pence, you know, the, the, that one video. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. kinds of theories about that one. So at a uh, tantalum 180 coming in, uh, what the hell does Super Chat, what the hell do Super Chats before the stream starts not show up? I have no idea. I'm not sure. If Again, you that's... send a super chat and we're not covering it, send, to, send it to us in the email. We'll probably cover it on Thursday or, or next Tuesday. I, I'm, I apologize. Huh. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how things work on Rumble. Um, again, Rumble does need to have a couple of kinks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like uh, have a super chat only, sh super chat only uh, stream option. and whatnot, pull yep. up an option. So... It's all good. But uh, Mando coming back again uh, to Steve. If, what? You're in, if you're in position and have the ammo, Straw Barrage. <laughs> straw fight. Cocks flying everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Sorry. 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 Don't, don't mind those two. They're just, uh, you know, having a dick fight. <laughs> Just so long as we don't cross the streams, it's not gay. It's all good. Yeah, no all good. position point. All right. That's right. true. Good game. That's true. All right. Let's see here. We'll jump over to uh, Odyssey here. Uh, just a heads up for the uh, the folks wanting to chat over on uh, Odyssey or Super Chat on Odyssey. We're going to be making some changes. Um, I'm going to let Blake make that call. Okay. But uh, we're going to be making some changes about doing the, uh, the Super Chats because uh, Crit he did the... Uh, well, he did the uh, the math on uh, how much yeah, a you. library coin is, and uh, well, we'll cover not it. much. We'll cover that later. We'll, we'll cover, cover that later. later. But uh, we'll cover. We'll go through Moving these. We got Andreas Kirsch, Christian with uh, two in a row. Here is first one. Remember the saying: you can't shake the ho 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 tree and expect the wife to drop out. Well, for politics, it's the same thing. Same thing. You can't shake the ho 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 tree out. <laughs> can't shake the ho 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 tree and expect moral, straightforward politicians to fall out from them. That's a fair point. Uh, yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah, that that's when you just break a branch off of that ho 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 tree and allegedly, figuratively speaking, beat that politician with it, yeah. and then you tar and feather him. Vigorously encourage him. You grab a branch and you vigorously encourage him. Ah, there, you, there you go, there you go. And uh, his second one here uh, in the FBI page, you read unlawful entry, which implies there was lawful entry of people. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Can anyone say? Uh, set up a la Whitmer. Mm -hmm. no, 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 one of the three hags of Lansing. Whitmer yeah. has Benson. Hmm. That's another show, yeah. It's another show, yeah. Right. Uh, we got Alec Alec card 1776 with three in a row. Here's first one. Have you heard about what's happening? Happened in New York City with the off, off duty firefighters, yes. No. What happened? They booed. Her, they booed the mayor. Oh, that one. Yes, yeah. I did hear about that. And now they're yeah. they're hunting for these people to do something to them. They want to re-educate them. Yeah. Listen, okay. in my opinion, 
if they start cracking down and punishing firefighters for that, they should all just walk off the job. Yeah. It, that's Let's just my burn. Opinion. Screw you. Now what? Yeah. Yep. Same thing with the cops. Yep. Yep. And uh, his second one here is uh, I'm making meads with a bunch of laugh emojis. Okay. Making meads? Making meads. 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 I'm making meads as well. Yeah. Takes a long time. It takes a long time. Takes six months minimum. Anyway. Yep. Right on. Uh, and his, uh, his next two. Well, I'm going to be nice and I'll play the first one. But uh, he he wants himself a box wide and cat lance. So we'll do the short version. Stop. Don't touch me there. This is my no no square. Stop. <laughs> I'm the one who came up with the term box wine and cat land, and then Blake made that video. Oh wow! He's okay. a fucking genius. Seventeenth level yeah. wizard, man. He is a seventeenth level wizard. It's a true story. And now to not be nice. Jimmy, remind me to vigorously encourage you with a breaker bar. <laughs> oh. Will do. My eyes. And Scarred for life. I believe we got one more super chat on YouTube. Oh, we, did we get out? Uh, yes, we did. Uh, Thump with the sweaty fat guy with $10. Hell yeah. Good to see you. Good, sir. Says, uh, I was in the store two days ago and the helmet kids were in there. One of them was standing in the meat section, making noises like popping in the jumpsuit. It was all I could do to not laugh myself hysterically. <laughs> <laughs> the helmet kids. Yeah. Hey, what are you going to do? I like it. That's good. Nice. Oh, that's. Uh, is it better to call them helmet kids than window lickers? Asking, uh, ask, asking for a friend, of course. The YouTube parameters too far. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. they're already, they're going to be very upset with what they already have. Uh, I'm pretty sure we've already given be given the uh, proverbial penis slap tonight. So you're probably uh, we'll jump over here to uh, MegTow.tv here, the best chat on the internet. How you guys doing over there? Let me uh, take just take a quick peek. That, that's a nice rack. Hey, there's a nice nice little vintage video. Nice. nice, nice, nice. Excellent. Give me, uh, let's see. Give me down and get on with it. Let's get, yeah, let's get on with the super chats. Uh, let's see. Got a crazy Anka here with uh, three in a row. His first one for five dollars. Here is five dollars for not dancing pop or killery. Yes, yes. Good. Good. I will None buy that, that man a beer. None of that. You disappoint me, good sir. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, his second one in a row here with five dollars. Uh, is it a wonder why Bolshevik sounds so close to bullshit? Bullshit coincidence? It's, it's bullshit, Vic. Now, probably not a coincidence. Yeah, bull. Yeah, bullshit, Vic. But uh, he says a uh, coincidence. I think not. Yeah. Yep. And uh, his uh, third one here for ten dollars. Uh, just W W F Y. I'm not sure what that acronym is for. Hmm. Uh, here is the rule of three. Three minutes without hair. Three minutes without air. Three hours in climate with... Uh, three hours in climate weather without protection. Inclement. Three days... Inclement. Thank you, Bob. Uh, without protection. Uh, three days without water. Three weeks without food. Three months without medical care slash hygiene. Hygiene with unable to have correct sanitation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's that's roughly true. That's about what we we learned and well, we learned that in survival school and seer school and seer school too. Field and all sanitation that school. Yeah. I went yeah. to battalion field sanitation. I did that too. Yeah, yeah. that's a shit burner. Yeah, I hate yep. it. And our next one here is uh, Mungo Harry. This is no comment, but it is a picture of some uh, very nice gals in some bikinis. So uh, with this one, I give you that, good sir. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. All right, cool. Nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. Pretty good, good looking ladies in the uh, there. Let's see, uh, singer for life with the two in a row. So. He's asking for asking for singing pop. Sorry, we already played singing pop. I think once, <laughs> is, I think once is enough for tonight. I had I had to get that jab in with the joke too. So I think that, oh, that was, was good. perfect. Uh, let's see, uh, his second one here. Uh, I would advise anyone in this group to be careful what they say because they're, uh, 
There is probably a few government plants in here. I'm sure there are. I'm former NSA. I was just let's just put let's just say right out of the yeah. table. I, I was gonna, I was gonna say there 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 are government plants. There's one right there. He's yeah, exactly. He's, he's short and he's evil and he's a dwarf. That's correct. <laughs> That's correct. I got you, man. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mick Tyronin with five dollars. Hey guys, if I have to leave the city in event of S H T F scenario, I have a 2010 Honda Civic and a 1998 Jeep Wrangler T J. Both mechanical sound. Which one should I leave in? I would take the one with better gas mileage. Yes, that would be the that would be the Honda. Yeah, if you have yep. to use dirt roads or bet any anything with in, inclement terrain, you know what? I'd want to do an area assessment. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, do an area yep. assessment. Whichever one you think will give you the better performance, because clearly a Honda is not going up a dirt road. Nope. Yep. Wow. If you if you know the back roads that you live in yes. and can get on them on the dirt roads, uh, take the Jeep. If you, I would advise against taking any major highways. Yes. Any stay major interstate of ways. Yep. Yep. Take the back roads. Trust me. They are out there. And let's see. Uh, last one over here on MGTOW.TV. We've got uh, mountain man, 9395, $10 says, well done. Not on not touching the sauce for two months. Pop. Um, well, thank you. I'm a, uh, I'm carrying the weight that he has passed on to me. Trust me. Uh, haven't touched in over four months. Hey, all I'll right. Drink. I'll drink to that. All right. <laughs> I have no desire to go back. My focus has doubled. Yeah, you are correct. Awesome. Let's see here. Oh, pardon me. Let's see. Got no lemons over on D Live. Okay. Oh. Pardon me again. See, I did see a couple of cash apps come in here. Let me make sure I don't miss those ones because I know you guys like to send them in, and I know the uh, email likes to uh, drag its ass. Yeah, we got a $50 one from Jimmy Roberts. Yeah, yeah. Thank you Let's so much. Here we got a oh, There's $5. a funny new one over on YouTube, too. Oh, uh, hang on. Before we uh, jump over there, see, uh, Drew Lone Star with $10. I'll be at work, and the singing pop video will play in my head. I bust out laughing out of nowhere. Love you guys. No homo. Uh, hey, uh, give, give us a quick piss break. I've been float my teeth have been floating for about uh, thirty. Uh oh, minutes. pop pop's teeth are floating. Right All right, well, let's see here. Uh, which one? Which one? Which one? Eh, you know what? We'll do. I tried to hold it to the end, but it's just not going to happen. Hey, man, it happens. <laughs> it oh. happens. All right, let's see. Here. Just want to jump back through here. Make sure uh, we're good. Like, it looks like we're good on a rumble there. Just want to make sure. It's clear right. on YouTube. Let's see. Uh, Ali Card with another one uh, says, uh, Hi, Jibedi, uh, Jibediah. Over on Odyssey there. 
And MGTOW is all caught up there. So we can jump back into the uh, email. Cash here. apps. Pull up the cash apps here. We got $5 from Paul. Wow. says, uh, for J6 is supposed to be the left's uh, Reichstag fire. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. But you're not wrong. You're not wrong. All right. Close enough. See, uh, I got a crypto Loki thrown in ten dollars. Uh, says, "Thank you for your service." Outstanding. Thank you. Outstanding. Outstanding. The last uh, fourteen years to me was it was just a desk job. Yep. It's, uh, it's that happens so quickly. Yeah. So quickly. Yeah. That. <laughs> Steve, you can dance if you want. I'm not going to dance right now. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> well, why not? No, we don't do that. Yet. So you got a ten dollars from Joseph. Uh, says uh, keep saying lives, keep saving lives. Well, I'm doing the best I can, but you guys got to help out by sharing the channel and the material. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. All right, let's see here. Got a fifty dollars from Jim. Holy shit, Jim! Thank you're you so awesome. much. Where's the at? Let me scroll up here. I, I got to give you one of these, not the tip, because you gave us the tip. We're not worthy. We're not. That was pretty good, Jim. Phrasing, phrasing was I, great. I, I, I was gonna say, I, I, as soon as I said that, click the button. I was like, "Fuck, that's a phrasing." <laughs> but it was still good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see here. Uh, you, uh, looks like that is all it for the cash ups tonight. So if you guys do send them in right now, you might be able to catch them before the ending of the show and the safety briefing. But let me just do one last quick jump through here. We are all good to go on YouTube. YouTube is clear. Let's see here. And speaking of which, how many do we got over here? Oh, of course, it's not giving me the uh, the numbers on there. So that's nice. Uh, looks like a 493 on YouTube, according to the StreamYard. We've got 796 over on Rumble. Yeah, we usually lose about 100 guys once we start doing the Super Chats. Right, exactly. And yeah, yeah that's, that's fine. And that's fine. We got 25 over on Odyssey. And uh, let's see, MGTOW, we got 45 over on DLive here. How many we got watching them? We got five over on DLive. And let's see here. Uh, Twitch, uh, damn it, I'm in the moderator stream. Yeah, damn it. Let's see, Twitch has, if my shit will fucking reload, we've got. 12 over on Twitch. Not bad. Well, not bad. Well, not bad. Not bad. I all believe right. we are all caught up for the Super Chats. Again, thank you guys for that so much. Apologies for the uh, technical issues we were had earlier. but uh, we, we unfucked the monkey and Murphy has been kicked to the curb. So, Good. Pop, I believe we are ready for safety brief. All right, everybody, don't drink and drive and don't drink and swim. It's never going to work out for you. If you must fornicate, wear a condom, and when you're done, take it with you or flush it down the toilet and watch it go all the way down. If you must engage in fisticuffs or violence, do everything in your power to run away first and then handle your business. And while doing so, do everything in your power not to go to the ground because that is where you get stomped out. Things are getting crazy out there. Rack up, pack up, and stack up. Traveling numbers. Maintain your situational awareness because if somebody is going to attack you, the environment will be different, and it's up to you to see it. And thank you for tuning in and share this channel and the videos far and wide because there's many more dudes out there I have yet to save. Boom. All righty. Uh, Battle Dwarf, any final words from you tonight? Something really quick. I forgot to mention this the last time. Uh, my guilty pleasure is watching Hell's Kitchen just because I like to watch them fuck up on things that would get you fired at a professional kitchen. But one of the contestants is in the kitchen one day doing a bunch of stuff, and somebody does something stupid, and he goes, that's redonkulous, and stops as though everybody's supposed to know what he's talking about. And they all look at him like, I think a contestant of Hell's Kitchen watches the pop show and if you do you know who i'm talking about you're from huntington beach or somewhere there around if you did watch the show and you're watching right now fucking hit us up dude because yeah. i saw that episode and that was funny all right oh yeah 
Send us an email there for that one. That'd be great. That'd be a great backstory. But, uh, again, yeah. So uh, my final thoughts, uh, if a uh, federal agent is uh, waving you into uh, a public building and a lot of people are around you, uh, it would be wise to uh, turn around and walk away. That's correct. Do not engage. Because uh, you never know. You yep. can either you know, take a selfie inside some fancy buildings or you could be facing 20 years in solitary for a nonviolent act of just wandering in. So again, like what to uh, back up what pop said, keep your head on a show, keep your head on a swivel, uh, keep one in the chamber. No, don't be afraid. It's not going to shoot your dick off unless you pull the trigger. <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy, everybody. Take it easy. <laughs>